Chapter 71 Can't Beat You You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 71 Can't Beat You Hui Yunqi didn't know what Xia Luobing was thinking. He only thought that she was nervous and tightened her grip on her wrist. He pulled the woman back to the bed and gritted his teeth. Do you care so much about him? What are you crazy about? Xia Luobing's head buzzed as he fell on the bed. He roared angrily, is this what clan's people bullying her in front of her? All of them are attacking her, dot thinking of this, Xia Luobing was enraged. He sat up on his bed, raised his head and glared at Yunqi. Do you think I can't beat you? He shouted. During the special training of the criminal police force, she was able to defeat Hui Yinchi with one to five moves, so there was no need to worry about it. Hui Yinchi suddenly smiled and his eyes lit up. He grabbed Xia Luobing's hands and said, Bing Bing, it's good for you. When they first met, Xia Luobing was like a sun that was always filled with energy. She was so bright that people couldn't open their eyes. Ever since she lost that child, her spirit had been bad, and she had always resisted and kept a distance from him. Hence, when he saw Xia Luobing roar angrily, his mood became weirdly better. Something's wrong with your brain. Xia Luobing looked at Hui Yinqi as if he was looking at a monster. He shook off his hand forcefully and threw out an angry sentence, if I said that the embrace that day was just a farewell, would you believe me? Without looking at the newspaper, Xia Luobing knew how much the gossip reporters had written. As a newlywed, she needed to explain. I believe you. Hui Yinqi looked at Xia Luobing's sparkling eyes and his voice softened. However, he quickly added, but I don't believe in Feng Shuo. Hug goodbye. If that's the case, I'm afraid I can only lie to Xia Luobing. Xia Luobing grabbed the piece of ice that had fallen to the ground and threw it into the trash can with a dark face. Was the temperature in the room so high that it turned into water in such a short period of time? Feng Shuo was in a car accident. What happened? Xia Luobing took another piece of ice and sat down to the side, asking stiffly. I married you, Yinqi said indifferently. He was in a bad mood to drink and get into a car accident, but he won't die. He just broke two ribs. Just two broken ribs. Why do you think Yinqi Hua's meaning is that you should break a few more? Xia Luobing frowned as he held the ice cube and pondered Hui Yinchi's words. Didn't he already figure it out? Why are you still driving drunk? If you're worried, I can accompany you to the hospital to visit him. Hui Yinchi suddenly said, his easy going manner startling Xia Luobing. Hui Yinchi was really strange. He clearly hated Feng Shua to the point of gnashing his teeth just now, why did he propose to visit him now? Forget it. Xia Luobing glanced at Hui Yinqi and rejected his proposal. Since the newspapers are saying how Feng Shua and I are, wouldn't it be even worse to be seen again now? It was almost the new year, so it was better to be calm in order to reduce the trouble. Besides, Feng Shua might not be willing to see her and Hui Yinqi, right? Hui Yinqi raised his eyebrows and looked down at Xia Luobing's cheeks. He reached for the ice pouch in the woman's hand and gently said, Ice, I'm sorry. In times of danger, he was always too late to protect her. Sunlight shone through the window. There were traces of sunlight on the striped blanket. Xia Luobing was sitting on the bed. Ho Yinchi held an ice bag and carefully rolled on her face. At such a close distance, he could even see her countless eyelashes that were like small fans. They were slightly curled up, like blooming acacia flowers. They were so beautiful that it made one suffocate. All right. Xia Luobing dodged the ice awkwardly and touched his face. Much better. The ice bag was really cold, but her face was strangely boiling hot. The feeling of being in the fire and ice heavens was really uncomfortable. You're still on wedding leave, there's no need to rush to work. Hui Yinqi looked at Xia Luobing and raised his eyebrows. Officer Xia is temporarily resting. 
the world is peaceful. Xia Luobing rolled his eyes, where's Yunxi? In the entire Hua clan, Hua Yunxi was her favorite. Since she couldn't work today, it would be good to find a little girl to go out for a stroll. She. Hua Yunxi raised his voice. Seeing that Xia Luobing was interested, he smiled and said, Go and give Yi Xiaochen a headache. In the apartment of the garden villa, Yi Xiaochen looked at Hui Yunxi helplessly with a face full of rookies. I say, Auntie, are you still letting people celebrate the new year? It's boring to spend the new year alone. Shouldn't I accompany you? Hui Yunxi smiled brightly, his face full of concern and consideration, lest you be empty, lonely, and cold. At Hui Yunxi's banquet yesterday, Hui Yunxi accidentally learned that because of Yi Xiaochen's awkward status, he rarely went back to the Yi clan, even during the spring festival. She thought that accompanying Yi Xiaochen during the Wan clan reunion should be easier to capture his heart. Who said I was alone? Yi Xiaochen pulled out Hui Yunxi's suitcase and put it on the ground. He grabbed her things and threw them in. My girlfriend will come to accompany me for the spring festival, so don't be a light bulb here. Hui Yunxi chopped and said, Don't lie to me, I don't believe it. He threw out a big white eye and said, Am I that easy to cheat? Just pack it up and I'll take it out later. In any case, she had already made up her mind that she had to rely on Yi Xiaochen no matter what. She held the spirit of biting Qing Shan and persisted to the end. After tidying up the dolls on the table, Yi Xiaochen went to pick up the clothes on the bed and looked back at Hui Yunxi while carrying the clothes. His attitude was exceptionally resolute, I'm not lying to you. My girlfriend really wants to come over. Ah ah ah. Put it down. Hui Yunxi suddenly pounced over screaming and snatched away the pants in Yi Xiaochen's hand. His face was as red as a cooked prawn and he stomped his feet angrily, you, you hooligan. Yi Xiaochen also saw what was stolen by Hui Yunxi, and his eyes flashed with embarrassment. However, he quickly laughed ruffianly, Yunxi, are you still wearing Hello Kitty pants? I like mature women wearing lace. So you're not my type, so don't waste your time with me and save me from delaying my date with my girlfriend. You, you're shameless. Hui Yunxi angrily wrapped his clothes together and stuffed them into the suitcase. He then pulled on the suitcase and glared fiercely at Yi Xiaochen, I will definitely make you regret it. Rogue. What's so great about lace? She also has lace. Socks. Yi Xiaochen poked his head out and said, Do you want me to send you off? Bang. Yi Xiaochen shrugged helplessly in response to the sound of the door being slammed heavily. The little girl's temper was quite strong. She looked around and saw that there were no dolls, no cosmetics. Hui Yunxi's room, Yi Xiaochen felt inexplicably empty in his heart. I'm really not used to it for a while. Yi Xiaochen tugged at the corner of his mouth and muttered, I wonder if this girl can find a home. Hui Yunxi angrily pulled the suitcase and ran out while looking back. Why didn't the damned Yi Xiaochen chase after him? Shouldn't he be so upset that he would run out and grab her arm to prevent her from leaving, while crying bitterly and repenting at the same time? Moreover, in order for him to catch up with her as soon as possible, she did not even drive the car and walked out. Half an hour later, Hui Yunxi was really tired. She pulled her suitcase and sat on the stairs at the entrance of the supermarket. She held her chin with both hands and stared in a certain direction. In order to ensure that Yi Xiaochen could see her at a glance, she sat down beside the light box at the entrance of the supermarket and tried her best to turn herself into a light body. An hour later, Hui Yunxi rubbed his numb calves and stood up to stomp his feet, muttering, It's so cold. My car keys are still at Yi Xiaochen's house. She finally managed to move out of the Hua clan on the pretext that she could cultivate her ability to live independently after leaving home. In addition, her eldest brother spoke kindly from the side. Wasn't it too unworthwhile for her to leave like this? After thinking for a while, Hui Yunxi dragged her suitcase along the route back. 
she decided to give Yi Xiaochen another chance. If he did well, she wouldn't bother with what happened just now. Eh, whose car is blocking here? Hui Yinxi frowned and looked at Sa Bao Hong Mercedes, Benz, who was parked at the entrance of the apartment. She dragged her suitcase to the other side of the apartment and took out the key to open the door. At the same time, she put on an angry expression. She must not let Yi Xiaochen think that she was reluctant to part with it. I forgot, the door opened with a pa.pa.pa.pa sound. Hui Yunxi saw a woman wearing a red short skirt hanging on Yi Xiaochen's body with lace lace on her black stockings. It was extremely tempting. It turned out that he was anxious to chase her away because he had a girlfriend. It turned out that he really liked such a mature woman. Thinking back to the little inside of the big dot mouthed monkey and Hello Kitty, Hui Yunxi only felt his nose sour. He took a deep breath and left his suitcase at the door. The two people who looked around and stared blankly went straight into the original room, took out a car key, and placed the apartment key on the table. Sorry to disturb you, you guys continue. Hui Yunxi smiled apologetically at the two of them and walked out with his head held high. The moment he closed the door, tears immediately fell out of his eyes. She was so sad, what should she do? The red Maserati didn't have anything to do with the window. The cold wind blew on Hui Yunxi's face, but she couldn't dry the tears on her face. Ding dong. Ding dong. Xia Luobing took a look at his phone and couldn't help but tease, Yun Shi, how's it going? She was optimistic about Yi Xiaochen and Hui Yun Shi. Sister Dadin Dot Law, Hui Yun Shi cried on the phone. Xia Luobing frowned and stood up, Yun Shi, don't cry. What's wrong? All right, you wait for me there. I'll be right there. After hanging up the phone, Xia Luobing went to get his coat. Just as Hui Yunxi came in, he couldn't help but frown when he saw her like this. Are you going out? Where are you going? Something happened to Yunxi. Come with me. Xia Luobing grabbed Hui Yunxi's arm and hurriedly went downstairs. He didn't need to say hello to Lu Yen in the living room before running out. Pa Lu Yen hatefully threw away the jewelry magazine in her hand and was instantly enraged, how uneducated. I'm really unlucky to marry such a woman. Young Master Yi, let's continue. The woman's legs on Yi Xiaochen's body were constantly rubbing. A pair of fingers painted with bright red nails drew circles in front of Yi Xiaochen's chest. She said coquettishly, if she didn't go to Paris, you would be hiding in the golden room. However, isn't that little girl too tender and not suited to your taste? Chapter 72 like you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 72 Like Yi Xiaochen pulled the woman off his body, threw her outside with a cold face, and then closed the door with a bang. Damn it, why was Hui Yunxi's tearful eyes always in his mind? Unfamiliar heartache was overwhelming, almost drowning him. Young Master Yi. Young Master Yi, my clothes. Yi Xiaochen grabbed the red coat on the sofa and threw it out. Then, he closed the door heavily again. He had just heard her drive away, but he didn't know if she was home yet. The little girl is in a bad mood. I wonder if it's safe to drive alone. Thinking of this, Yi Xiaochen was finally unable to remain calm. He picked up his phone and prepared to make a call, but Hui Yinqi went to call first. Yi Xiaochen, what happened between you and Yunxi? Hui Yunxi's tone was very bad, and she was a little angry. She called me crying and didn't tell me what happened. I'll be right at your apartment, so you can persuade her, she didn't go home. Yi Xiaochen jumped up and his heart was pulled into a ball. The garden villa was not far from the Hua clan's old mansion, so he should have arrived long ago. Hui Yunxi's tone was also shocked, is Yunxi not here? I'll go out immediately. Yi Xiaochen hung up the phone and hurriedly left the house, feeling uneasy. Hui Yunxi's sad face had been lingering in his mind, and those innocent eyes seemed to be condemning him. 
After hanging up the phone, Hui Yinchi looked at the two women opposite him and helplessly frowned, is this okay? Hui Yinchi drove Xia Luobing to the location Hui Yinchi had mentioned very quickly. Hearing Hui Yinchi tearfully recount what had happened, Xia Luobing came up with such an anxious method to punish Yi Xiaochen. Sister in law, is this good? Hui Yinchi's eyes reddened as he sobbed, what if he can't find me? The corner of Xia Luobing's mouth twitched and he rolled his eyes helplessly, he definitely won't find you. Now that the three of them were in Hui Yinchi's villa, it would be strange if Yi Xiaochen could find them. Then what should we do next? Hui Yinchi looked pitifully at Xia Luobing, clearly treating her as a last resort. Yinchi, if he really doesn't like you, what are you going to do? Xia Luobing looked at the little girl worriedly. She could tell that Hui Yinchi seemed to love Yi Xiaochen badly. Hui Yinchi wiped away his tears and remained silent for a while before muttering, I'm so good, why doesn't he like it? The moment these words were spoken, the three of them fell silent. The last thing they should ask in their relationship was, why? All right, big brother and sister dot in dot law, I'm joking. Hui Yinchi rubbed his eyes and forced a smile. He said seriously, although I like him very much, if he really doesn't like me, I can't keep pestering him. At least I tried my best. Xia Luobing hugged Hui Yinxi's shoulder and nodded, yes, at least you worked hard. Yinxi, go to the study for a while. Hui Yinxi looked at the time and said, I just texted Yi Xiaochen. He's on his way. Hui Yinxi hesitated for a moment. Finally, she bit her lips and entered the study. When she closed the study door, she heard Yi Xiaochen enter. Her heart instantly pulled, and the sound of her heart beating almost overwhelmed the sound of the voice outside. Yinxi has already returned to the old mansion. Hui Yinxi gestured for Yi Xiaochen to sit down, then looked at the panting man and said half dot jokingly, what's going on? It was the first time he had seen Yi Xiaochen in such a sorry state since he had known him for so long. Little girl is angry, so she hurriedly roars and leaves. When Yi Xiaochen heard Hui Yinchi say that Hui Yinchi had arrived home safely, he couldn't help but let out a long sigh of relief. He suddenly felt relieved, she has already returned home. Didn't you tell me earlier? Xia Luobing stared at Yi Xiaochen as if he was examining a prisoner. Seeing that Yi Xiaochen was uncomfortable, he asked, Do you like Yinxi? Hearing Xia Luobing's words, Hui Yinxi stuck firmly to the wall, gritting her lips with her teeth. She felt so nervous that she was almost unable to breathe. Yes, of course I do. Yi Xiaochen was slightly stunned. He looked at Xia Luobing and Hui Yinxi and smiled. I've always treated her like my own sister. Otherwise, would I let her stay with me for so long? Hui Yinchi stared at Yi Xiaochen as if he wanted to see through his opponent's thoughts, Yi Xiaochen, you know that Bing Bing is not talking about this. Xia Luo Bing glared at Yi Xiaochen, like is like, don't like is not like, give a good word. Yi Xiaochen's face was full of black lines. Finally, he sighed helplessly, I really treat her as a little sister. She is definitely not a man and woman. Isn't this clear enough? Enough. Hui Yinchi opened the door and stood at the door of the study. His eyes were a little red and swollen. He walked up to the three of them and nodded at Yi Xiaochen. Sorry to have disturbed you during this period of time, but it won't happen again. Without waiting for Yi Xiaochen to speak, Hui Yinchi dragged Xia Luobing's hand and said, Sister dot in dot law. Let's go home. When he reached the door, Hui Yinxi stopped and said to Yi Xiaochen, I don't lack big brother, so I won't cause trouble for Yi Xiaochen. Yi Xiaochen couldn't tell what he felt when he saw the door slammed shut. After a while, he turned to Hui Yinxi and said stiffly, What does she mean? You won't be her lover, and she won't be your sister. Hui Yinxi looked at Yi Xiaochen meaningfully, You shut your heart too tightly. In fact, she can squeeze in with a slight crack. Unexpectedly, Yi Xiaochen did not refute and fell silent. When Hui Yinxi returned home, Hui Yinxi had already fallen asleep. 
Xia Luo Bing was in a daze in her room and gritted her teeth as she muttered, Yi Xiaochen really doesn't know what's good about him. What a nice girl Yun Shi is. He still doesn't like her. Is there something wrong with his brain? She had already treated Hui Yun Shi as her younger sister, but now that the little girl's eyes were crying like walnuts, it would be strange if she wasn't angry. Why didn't I notice that you were so defensive before? Hui Yunqi took off his coat and sat on the chair opposite Xiao Luo Bing, teasing her. After what happened tonight, the relationship between the two of them seemed to have eased up a lot. Xia Luo Bing's cheeks bulged with anger as she glared at Hui Yunqi, it's Yun Shi who's been bullied now. How can you say such sarcastic words? She really regretted not giving Yi Xiaochen a fat beating before coming back. Bing Bing, Xiaochen has his own reasons. You don't understand him. Hui Yinxi frowned and said, and if he really doesn't like Yinxi, he can't force it. Although she knew that Hui Yinxi's words were reasonable, Xia Luo Bing was still quite unhappy, I only know if I like it after getting along with her. What if I suddenly like it? What about you? Hui Yinxi looked at Xia Luo Bing and blurted out. They were from strangers to intimacy, and from intimacy to strangers. Could they still get along slowly and like her again? Xia Luo Bing was stunned for a moment. He turned his head away from Hui Yinqi and finally noticed that the man was still staring at him. He stood up irritably and said, We still have half a year left in our contract. Next summer, I will be free. Hui Yinqi's expression darkened, but a faint smile quickly appeared on his face. Although Xia Luo Bing still resisted him, his attitude had obviously softened a lot, didn't he? Moreover, she had already said that she could get along with him slowly. What if she suddenly liked him? The new year passed very quickly. Because the 10 Miles Golden Beach project was at a critical stage, Hui Yunqi went to the company early to preside over the overall situation. At the regular meeting, all the shareholders praised Feng Shua's ability. President, according to the current progress of the 10 Miles Golden Beach, the project should be completed in two months, and the construction period can be advanced by one month. Li Xiaoren said happily, President Feng's strength really makes us old fellows admire him. Hui Yunqi raised his eyebrows and looked at Feng Shua, who always had a warm smile on his face. He smiled faintly, of course I'm at ease with President Feng staring at me. At the end of the meeting, Hui Yinqi and Feng Shua both tacitly stayed behind, their eyes facing each other with murderous intent. Since it's so hard, don't drink and drive. What if the next time you hit your ribs, it's your brain instead of your ribs? Isn't it the company's loss? Hui Yinqi said coldly. Feng Shua slipped half a meter behind his rotating chair and placed one hand on his raised knee. He looked at Yinqi provocatively, I didn't die in the car accident. You must feel very sorry, right? She clearly knew that there was no need to suppress Hui Yinqi for a while, but seeing Xiao Luobing say, I do, to him in her holy wedding dress and seeing the two of them kiss in front of so many people, her unwillingness grew like weeds. He called her and she actually died. Anger and frustration made him drink a lot of wine, but when he drove back, he crashed into the railing. During the few days in the hospital, he thought more clearly that one day he would trample Yin Chi Hua under his feet. You're right, I'm very regretful. Hui Yin Chi stood up and looked down at Feng Shuo. He could see the unwillingness in the man's eyes, and the mockery at the corner of his mouth became even more obvious. Farewell to the last hug. Feng Shuo, should I say that you are pretentious, or should I praise your methods? After listening to Xia Luobing's explanation that day, Hui Yinqi immediately understood that it was only a means for Feng Shua to retreat. Feng Shua's expression turned cold. He held the table with one hand and was about to stand up. However, when he saw the mockery in Hui Yinqi's eyes, he sat back in his chair and smiled proudly, Hui Yinqi, the competition between us has only just begun. Whether it was the Hua clan's property or Xia Luo Bing, it would be his. But you've already lost in the beginning. Hui Yinqi sneered. 
Feng Shuo's face was already filled with rage. Hui Yinchi was right, he had lost completely in the matter of Xia Luobing. Hui Yinchi, the one who laughs until the end is the real winner. Feng Shuo glared at Hui Yinchi. Wait and see. Hui Yinchi stood up and left. When he passed Feng Shuo, a cold smile appeared on his lips. The woman who coveted him also wanted to see if she had the strength to do so. Feng Shuo's face was ashen and his eyes were wide open. He clenched his right fist and smashed it onto the desk. He gritted his teeth and said, Hui Yinchi, I will definitely trample you on the soles of my feet and leave you with nothing. After the new year, many hotel restaurants reopened, bustling with activity. After work, Xiao Luobing and Intoxicated were sitting in a spicy fragrant pot restaurant eating heartily. Her forehead was already covered in fine sweat. Student Bing Bing, how is your life after marriage? Intoxicated, he drank a mouthful of orange juice and began his best gossip, do you want to share with us the wonderful life of a young lady from a wealthy family? She knew from Hui Yunqi that the relationship between Xia Luobing and Hui Yunqi was not as incompatible as they thought. They were even very harmonious, so she dared to ask. Xiao Luobing rolled her eyes at Tao Zui. She picked up the flamulina volutypes from the bowl and put them on a plate. She ate with relish and was not prepared to talk about Tao Zui at all. Hey, young Madame Hua, did you listen to me? Intoxicated, her eyes flashed with flowers as she continued to ask. She had no intention of letting Xiao Luobing off at all. What a nice. Tell me. Xiao Luobing took a sip of the drink, put down her chopsticks, held her chin with both hands, and blinked a few times at intoxication. Tell me, intoxicated student, what do you want to know? Are you in harmony? Intoxicated, he asked, Hui Yinchi. How is he? Chapter 73 Do not resign you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 73 Do not resign Xiao Luo Bing was drinking a drink. Hearing the intoxicating words, she spat it out. The drink choked into her trachea and coughed violently. Her originally white and tender face turned red. This woman really dared to ask anything. As for it. Intoxicated, he shrugged innocently and handed over a piece of paper towel, wipe it off. After a long time, Xiao Luobing finally calmed down. Looking at Zue Zue, she frowned helplessly and sighed faintly, Zue Zue, we are separated. Actually, it wasn't really a separation. It was a big bed that was split into two, each occupying half of the land and not disturbing each other. What? Intoxicated, his eyes widened and he screamed. He noticed the astonished gazes of the other guests around him and quickly covered his mouth. He stared at Xia Luobing and lowered his voice, What are you doing? Separating after less than a month of marriage. It can't be Hui Yinchi, right? Fuck off. Xiao Luobing glared at him intoxicated, but her eyes turned dim. After a long while, she forced a smile. Intoxicated, I can't forget the feeling of that child being peeled off from my body. She knew that Hui Yinchi could not be blamed for that matter, but her heart was tightly shut. Moreover, in a few months, the current relationship would end, so why bother with it? Bing Bing, I know. Intoxicated, she held Xia Luobing's hand, her face filled with heartache. But the past is over. People have to look forward. Moreover, I think Hui Yinchi is sincerely treating you well. I'm afraid you'll regret it if you miss out. Xia Luobing was stunned for a moment, and she was intoxicated with the dishes. She smiled and said, All right, let's eat. It's rare for us to come out to eat together. Let's not talk about these unhappy things. Seeing that Xiao Luobing didn't want to say anything more, she could only nod her head and say, All right. The two women did not enjoy the food and ordered again. They drank their drinks while waiting for the dishes to be served. They giggled and said some funny things. Can I sit here? A familiar voice came from above. 
Xiao Luobing and intoxicated raised their heads together. Seeing Feng Shua standing at the table, they exchanged glances and saw astonishment in each other's eyes. There are so many seats in the restaurant, why do you want to share the table with them? Right now, the newspapers outside were vividly portraying the situation between Xia Luobing and Feng Shuo. It was as if they had seen it with their own eyes. It was too late to avoid suspicions, wasn't it? Bing Bing, there are no seats in the restaurant. Feng Shuo helplessly looked at the two of them and smiled bitterly, forget it if it's inconvenient. Xia Luobing and intoxication occupied four seats in front of the window. The two sofas were opposite each other. Each sofa could seat two people. Therefore, if Feng Shua sat down, he would either sit on the same sofa as Xia Luobing or face Xia Luobing face to face. No matter how he looked at it, it would be inappropriate. All right, you guys eat. I'll go ask the other guests. Feng Shua looked at the two and smiled helplessly. After not seeing them for a few days, he seemed to have worn out a lot. Thinking of Feng Shua's car accident just now, Xia Luobing finally couldn't bear it. She stopped Feng Shua, who was about to leave, and signaled him to sit over there intoxicated. Sit here. We're going to eat soon anyway. Feng Shua turned around and smiled warmly, All right, thank you, Bing Bing. Intoxicated, he looked at Feng Shua, who was eating seriously, and then at Xia Luobing, who had a calm expression. His heart was covered in cold sweat. If those tabloid reporters saw him again and it was another war of words, Luobing's life in the Hua clan would not be easy. Sensing the intoxicated and worried look in her eyes, Xiao Luobing put down the chopsticks in her hand helplessly and smiled, intoxicated, I've finished eating. Are you leaving? Feng Shuo raised his head and looked at the bowls filled with guilt. Bing Bing, if you feel it's inconvenient for me to go somewhere else, then I will. Don't disturb your meals. Feng Shuo said apologetically. Intoxicated, she rolled her eyes. She had already disturbed him and said those words. What had she done long ago? Since we've already sat down, let's eat together. Hui Yinchi glanced at Feng Shuo raised his eyebrows, and said neither salty nor indifferent. He sat down beside Xia Luobing and declared his ownership. Why are you here? Xia Luobing widened her eyes and looked at Hui Yinchi beside her. For the first time, she felt that her brain circuit was too long and her reaction was too slow. Hui Yinchi rubbed Xiao Luobing's hair and took out a napkin to carefully wipe off the oil stains on Xiao Luobing's lips. He scolded, why are you eating such spicy food? It's not good for your health. Xia Luobing looked at Hui Yinchi blankly like a wooden chicken. When she reacted, she saw the intoxicated smile on her face. Heavens, what is Hui Yinchi doing? This spicy pot was very close to the Public Security Bureau. Many of her colleagues would steal their meals here. If anyone saw it, she would lose face. She was sure that Hui Yinchi had done it on purpose. Xia Luobing couldn't wait to bury her face in the bowl, but she could still feel the different looks in the eyes of the three of them, and her face burned. President Hua, are you here to eat too? Intoxicated, she helped her good sisters out of the encirclement. Her husband bumped into her and ate with her ex-boyfriend. Xia Luobing's luck was really bad. Originally, I was picking up Bing Bing from work, but when I heard her colleagues say that you were eating here, I came over. Hui Yunqi explained with a good temper. President Hua is so considerate. Intoxicated, he was completely captured by Hui Yunqi and stood on his side. He did not hold back his praise, we, Ice Ice, are truly blessed. After he finished speaking, he was still intoxicated and didn't forget to look at Feng Shuo. His real husband had already arrived, so why didn't you leave? I still have something to do, so I won't disturb the three of you. Feng Shua stood up and smiled warmly at Xia Luobing, Bing Bing, I'll treat you to dinner another day. The corner of Xia Luobing's mouth twitched. 
Was this Feng Shua deliberately causing trouble for her? Hui Yinchi glanced at the angry Feng Shua and hugged Xiao Luobing's shoulder, lazily saying, You should call her sister. In. Luobing Bing. Pooh. Feng Shua couldn't help but laugh. This time, Feng Shua's expression became even uglier. He turned around and left with a dark face. Xiao Luobing looked at the Tao Zui and said, Keep eating. If it's not enough, I'll order some more. She and Hui Yinchi would die of embarrassment if they were together, so it was better to stay here and be intoxicated. It's just a pity, Ice, I've finished eating. Let's go first. Intoxicated, he picked up his bag and rushed out. His speed was comparable to a hundred dot meter race. Hey! Xia Luobing was anxious to stop herself from getting intoxicated, but Hui Yinchi pulled her back and fell into the man's embrace. A familiar smell lingered around her nose, like a thin cloak that dyed every cell in her body. Her face instantly turned hot. Bing Bing, I don't like to see you with Feng Shuo. Hui Yunxi unconsciously rubbed Xiao Luobing's face with her fingers. Her eyes landed on the car not far from the window, and the corner of her mouth held a cold smile. This Feng Shuo really didn't give up. However, he would never give him a chance. Xia Luobing broke free from Hui Yinchi's embrace and moved to the side. She maintained a safe distance from Hui Yinchi and corrected, I didn't come with him. I came out to eat with intoxicated. When he came, there wasn't a table available in the restaurant, so he shared the table with us. Oh, really? Hui Yinchi replied, but the expression on his face clearly stated, I don't believe it. Seeing that Ho Yinchi did not believe her words, Xia Luobing's heart burst with anger. She stood up angrily and turned around to leave. She did not do anything wrong, did she need to explain it to him? Damn it, he didn't believe her. The weather in early spring was still a little cold, and Xiao Luobing couldn't help but shiver. Damn it, she had left her coat in the shop. Xia Luobing Hui Yunqi put her clothes on Xiao Luobing's body with a dark face and said angrily, her temper is getting bigger and bigger. There's nothing between Feng Shua and me. Xia Luobing's face turned red with anger. Believe it or not. She felt very tired from explaining this little thing all the time Hui Yunqi stared at Xia Luobing and said after a moment of silence, I believe you, but I don't believe him. Yu Xiao Luobing was so angry that she couldn't say anything. She turned around and was about to leave, but the man behind her grabbed her arm and pulled her into her car. Take my car. I have a car. Xia Luobing glared at Hui Yinchi, I have to drive to work tomorrow. The sky was full of stars and the street lights were on, but Xia Luobing's heart was dark. She felt that Hui Yinchi was deliberately looking for trouble for her. I'll send you off. The man said. The black Maybach turned around and slowly left. Through the rearview mirror, Hui Yinchi saw Feng Shua's face getting farther and farther away, and the smile on his lips grew colder and colder. When Hui Yinchi and Feng Shua arrived home, Lu Yan and Hui Jingxiong were talking in the living room. Seeing the two of them enter, Lu Yan turned off the TV and said coldly, You two come over. Xia Luobing subconsciously frowned and instinctively resisted. Ever since she married into the Hua clan, this mother in law really didn't have a good expression on her face. She didn't like to hold grudges, but her forgetfulness wasn't too great. She clearly remembered the last slap. Mom, we're tired. We want to go upstairs to rest. Hui Yunqi held Xia Luobing's hand and nodded at the two of them, heading towards the stairs. Lu Yan glanced at Hui Jingxiong, her eyes flashing with displeasure. However, she still said, you two come over and discuss something. The old man spoke. Even if Hui Yinchi was unhappy, he could only drag Xia Luobing's hand back. Sitting on the sofa opposite them, he felt the atmosphere was a little depressed. He frowned and asked, what happened? Xia Luobing's body tensed up as if she was facing a great enemy. 
Every time she returned to the Hua clan, she felt like she was fighting a tough battle. She needed to keep her spirits up at all times and maintain a high degree of alertness and vigilance. Yunqi, you and Luo Bing are also married. Shouldn't we have a child now? Lu Yan glanced at Xia Luo Bing and said coldly, You are the successor of the Hua clan. How can you not have children? Xia Luo Bing's face turned pale and his fingers tightened slightly. The child had always felt pain in his heart. Now that he had uncovered the scar, he was still dripping with blood. The pain was so painful that he could not breathe. Hui Yinqi held Xia Luobing's hand and slightly increased his strength. He raised his head to look at Lu Yan and Hui Zhengxiong and said in a deep voice, We will take this matter to heart. Is there anything else? What's the use of putting it in your heart? Lu Yan ignored Hui Yinqi's perfunctoriness and stared coldly at Xia Luobing. Luo Bing, your body is not easy to conceive, so you should take good care of yourself. From tomorrow onwards, you shouldn't go to work. You should take care of yourself at home and give birth to a child for the Hua family. As long as she thought that Xia Luo Bing might not be able to give birth to a child, Lu Yan felt annoyed and wished she could immediately change her son's wife. No, Xia Luo Bing immediately rejected Lu Yan's proposal. She entered the police academy at the age of 16 and joined the workforce at the age of 20. For so many years, work had long become a part of her life. How could she give up? Besides, staying at home for the sake of having a baby. What's the difference between that and a child.bearing tool? And then she can have a baby after taking care of her body. All sorts of complicated emotions surged into her heart. Xiao Luobing's eyes were filled with anger, sadness, and persistence. Her fingernails subconsciously pinched into her flesh, but she could not feel any pain. Do you want our Hua clan to lose all descendants? Lu Yan slammed the table heavily and stared at Xia Luobing angrily, what are you so relieved about? Chapter 74 Warm You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 74 Warm Hui Yunqi held Xia Luobing's colder and colder hands, feeling extremely distressed. He helped her stand up and coldly said to Lu Yan and Hui Zhengxiong, let's go upstairs first. You, you, Lu Yan's fingers trembled with anger. She couldn't even say anything she wanted to say. She could only stop Hui Yunqi and Xia Luobing with hatred and shout, Yunqi, why are you so foolish? Don't you really want a child of your own? If Hui Yinqi didn't have children, wouldn't the Hua Corporation end up in Feng Shua's hands? Thinking of this, Lu Yan became even more determined to stop Xia Luo Bing and said reluctantly, Back then, I promised you that I would get married. Now you must resign and take care of your body and have a child at home. Mom. Hui Yinqi's expression became uglier and uglier. He could feel the chill coming from Xia Luo Bing's body. Xia Luo Bing pushed Hui Yinqi away and straightened his back, his eyes calm, I will not resign. What kind of tone is that? Lu Yan stared at Xia Luo Bing and said, You're just a stupid policeman. Our Hua clan can't afford to support you. Do you need to go out to work every day to earn money? Xia Luo Bing's head buzzed and he didn't want to argue with Lu Yan. He said indifferently, if mom thinks that I'm not suitable to be the daughter in law of the Hua family, then let Hui Yinqi replace me. After saying that, Xia Luo Bing went upstairs directly. This kind of life made her feel suffocated and depressed. Her limbs and bones were rolling with anger. Lu Yan's words were more like needles piercing into her heart. The fine pain made it difficult for people to breathe. Pata. Hearing the sound of the door being opened, Xiao Luo Bing restrained her emotions and calmly turned to look at the man at the door. Her eyes met. She saw anger and other complicated emotions in his eyes. Could it be that he also wanted her to resign and have children at home? I can't resign. Xia Luo Bing spoke first. She clenched her fingers tightly, but tried to keep her voice calm. I might not have a child anymore. If you're in a hurry, go. 
Xia Luobing felt pain in her heart. It turned out that hearing others say it was a completely different feeling from what she said. The latter was even more painful because she tore open the scar in her heart with her own hands. Xia Luobing. Hui Yinqi roared and walked over to the woman, grabbing her wrist and bringing her to her chest. Anger rolled in her eyes, are you so eager to divorce me that he didn't ask her to resign nor did he say that she had to have a child, but the woman in front of him still repeatedly proposed to separate. Could it be that she really couldn't wait to leave? Xia Luobing, let me tell you, I will definitely not let you leave. Hui Yinqi's eyes flashed with determination. Seeing Xia Luobing's heart skip a beat, her mind went blank. Hui Yinqi, don't go too far. Xia Luobing also got angry and shook off Hui Yinqi's hand, your mother wants a child. I can't have a child anymore. Just as she said that, tears fell down unprepared. Xia Luobing turned her head and didn't want Hui Yinqi to see her sorry state. She felt wronged, mixed with pain, and rushed into her heart. Hui Yinqi stared at Xiao Luobing's shaking shoulders. Her eyes were deeper than the night. The room was so quiet that he could hear her tears. After a long time, Xia Luobing took a deep breath and entered the bathroom. He closed the door and saw that his eyes were red and swollen in the mirror. He couldn't help but smile bitterly. How did he end up like this? Half a year ago, she was still the high dot spirited captain of the criminal police force. Her daily life was to catch bad people and make things easier. But what about now? It was as if her life had turned into a mess ever since she signed the contract. Standing on the balcony, Hui Yinqi's hands on the railing trembled slightly. After searching for a long time, he found the cigarette. After lighting it, he looked at the vast night sky with a serious expression. She was very sad, he was very distressed, but even so, he was still unwilling to let her go. The room was frighteningly quiet. Hui Yinqi fell into a deep silence. It wasn't until his fingertips felt burning that he suddenly woke up. He just happened to hear the sound of the bathroom door being opened. He turned around and saw Xia Luobing changing into her pajamas with a calm expression. Hui Yinqi snapped the cigarette in his hand, pressed it into the ashtray, and entered the bathroom. Not long after, the sound of bathing rang out. Xiao Luobing lifted the corner of the quilt and lay on her side. Her mind was in a state of chaos and exhaustion. Hearing the sound of the bathroom door opening, Xia Luobing subconsciously closed her eyes. This room was like a cage, trapping her. Hui Yinqi frowned as he looked at the woman who was breathing unevenly. He went to bed and carried her into his arms with the quilt. He had a lot of strength, as if he was afraid of losing her. What are you doing? Xia Luobing opened her eyes and looked at Hui Yinqi with a guarded expression. Ever since they got married, although the two of them had been lying in the same bed, they had never made any intimate movements. Now that they were hugging each other so close, Xia Luobing's nervous breathing was in disorder. Give me a hug. Hui Yinqi's voice was deep as she placed her chin on top of the woman's head. Ice, don't move. Let me hug you for a while. Xia Luobing's body stiffened, and after a while, she said dully, it's very late. Rest. His embrace was broad and warm, with a clean and pleasant smell. It was easy for people to indulge in it. Xiao Luobing tried hard to break free, but the man hugged her even tighter. Bing Bing, you always resist me like this. Yin Chi Hua's voice was hoarse and painful. His fingers were fastened to the woman's waist through the quilt and he muttered, I'm sorry to lose that child. More than once, he thought, if he hadn't gone to Southeast Asia, if he had been by her side, would their child be born soon. But there was no ifs in this world. Yin Chi Hua, the reason we started is because of that agreement. Xia Luobing said with difficulty, the past is over. Don't mention it again in the future. The lost child was destined to be an eternal pain in her heart, untouchable. There was less than half a year left. She only hoped that she could pass peacefully. 
she hoped that after everything was over, she could return to her original life. Ice Huiyinchi tried her best to suppress the urge to rub her into her flesh and blood. She took a deep breath and lay down with her arms around Xiao Luobing's struggling arm. She said in a deep voice, I'm not doing anything, I just want to hug you to sleep. Xiao Luobing's heart skipped a beat. Her nose was sour, and an urge to cry surged into her eyes. She lifted her arms and relaxed. Hui Yunqi hugged her, her back against his lower abdomen. The warmth spread to her limbs and bones, and her whole body became warm and comfortable. Bing Bing, don't mention separating. Hui Yunqi's voice descended from above his head, carrying a depressing emotion. Even if it's only six months, don't mention separating for now. Xia Luobing's heart ached. She bit her lips tightly. She suddenly wanted to turn around and pounce into his arms and cry. But in the end, she held back her tears and fell silently. The night was dark. Xiao Luobing's body gradually relaxed. Her eyelids became darker and darker. In the end, she fell asleep in a daze. She unexpectedly slept unexpectedly peacefully. When she woke up in the morning, Hui Yinchi had already packed up her things and brought her breakfast on the table. Good morning. Recalling that the two of them hugged each other and slept last night, Xiao Luo Bing was a little embarrassed. She got out of bed and put on her slippers to wash up. Hui Yinchi raised his eyebrows. After last night, he had already understood that Xiao Luo Bing was a hedgehog hiding in her shell. She looked tough and piercing but she was actually soft and fragile. Therefore, he wanted to get along with her in another way. After washing up, Xia Luobing changed into a simple and capable set of clothes. Yunqi was sitting on the sofa waiting for her to have breakfast. After dinner, I'll take you to work. Xia Luobing raised her head and was about to ask why, when she suddenly remembered that her car hadn't returned from work yesterday, so she nodded and said, All right. In the morning, it was millet porridge accompanied by steamed dumplings, which made people's appetite boom. Xiao Luobing ate the ice satisfactorily, and her mood was much better. The dumplings are delicious. Xiao Luobing said sincerely. Hui Yinqi stared at Xiao Luobing. When the woman was confused, she suddenly reached out her finger to wipe away the dumpling pie on her face. There was a mocking smile in her eyes. Ice ice, you ate too much. Yu Xia Luobing glared at Hui Yinchi awkwardly and wiped her face carefully with the napkin on the table. Then, she let out a long sigh of relief and said to Hui Yinchi after thinking for a while, I might be late tonight. Hui Yinchi frowned, what's the matter? Xia Luobing patiently explained, yesterday, I heard the director say that there is a big case that requires the cooperation of our criminal police. If nothing unexpected happens, I will stay behind after work to discuss this matter. Since the two of them still needed to spend half a year together, they couldn't always be at loggerheads. They had to work hard to get along peacefully so that the time didn't seem to be that long. Hui Yinchi nodded, I see. When she went out, Xia Luobing didn't see Lu Yan and Hua Zhengxiong, so she heaved a sigh of relief in her heart. Although she was the captain of the criminal police force and was good at dealing with bad people, quarreling with other people was not good. Especially since the other party was Hui Yinchi's mother, things were even more troublesome. It was best not to meet her now. Seeing the worry in Xia Luobing's eyes, Hui Yinchi frowned and said, This kind of day won't be long. Xiao Luobing nodded. I know. Half a year later, it would be good for everyone to return to the bridge road. Probably because she left early, there was no traffic jam on the road. She arrived at the entrance of the Public Security Bureau at 7.30. At this time, there was still half an hour before Xiao Luobing went to work. I'm leaving. Xia Luobing turned around and took his bag. Hui Yinchi pressed down on his wrist and raised his hand to face the man's deep gaze. He suddenly panicked in his heart, but he still pretended to be calm. What's wrong? Yinchi let go of Xia Luobing's hand and smiled, nothing, you go to work. 
Xia Luobing was stunned for a moment before finally nodding, all right. Watching Xia Luobing walk into the public security compound, Hui Yinqi slowly turned around and left. Bing Bing, we will be together for a long time. For almost a whole day, Xia Luobing was out of shape until Director Gao called out, Luo Bing, are you uncomfortable? Your complexion is so bad. Ah. Xia Luo Bing came back to her senses in time and quickly shook her head, no. Chief, say it. They are tracking an international drug trafficking gang. According to our informants, they will do business in Sea City in the near future. Our mission is to get stolen goods. Director Gao looked at Xia Luo Bing with a serious expression, Luo Bing, do you have the confidence to complete this mission by handing over this case to your criminal police unit? Xia Luo Bing nodded, her eyes resolute, I promise to complete the mission. During this period of time, he had always been entangled in a mess of things. Now, it was good that he could devote himself to such a big case and divert his energy. All right. I believe you. Director Gao looked at his beloved general and was very satisfied. He continued, in order to ensure the smooth completion of this mission, you have also sent an expert to assist you in completing this mission. Xia Luobing nodded, but at the same time, she couldn't hold back her curiosity and asked, who is it? Chapter 75 Don't touch my file you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 75 Don't touch my file, I don't know yet. I only know that he's a special police officer. He's definitely no weaker than you. Don't worry. Director Gao smiled and said, the relevant information hasn't reached this place yet. In the next few days, you can make some preparations and focus on investigating drug trafficking cases involving Southeast Asia. Perhaps you can find some important clues from them. Xia Luobing nodded, all right. In the past two years, she had indeed handled many drug trafficking cases and caught many drug dealers. Many people said that the source of the goods came from Southeast Asia, but the exact location was not clear. Perhaps this time, she could solve all of her doubts and catch a big fish. A confident smile appeared at the corner of Xia Luobing's mouth, and her entire body sparkled. Director Gao couldn't help but laugh when he saw this, all right, that's all for today's meeting. If you don't leave, Bing Bing, the people outside will be in a hurry. Xiao Luo Bing was stunned for a moment. She turned to look at the window. The black Maybach was parked in the courtyard of the Public Security Bureau. Hui Yinchi was leaning against the window with a camel dot colored coat and one hand in her pocket. He was also looking at her when she looked at him. Boss, hurry home. President Hua is already in a hurry. Li Xiang also teased. They knew Xiao Luobing too well. If they didn't hurry up and get rid of her, they would have to work overtime today. Director Gao smiled and said, All right, the meeting is over. Luo Bing, hurry back as well. Xia Luo Bing was extremely embarrassed. He grabbed the folder on the table and nodded at Director Gao. He slowly walked out. Seeing the handsome man in the night, his heart stirred and his voice softened. Why are you here? I'll pick you up from work. Hui Yinchi had already opened the car door. When Xia Luo Bing went in and circled to the other side to get into the driver's seat, the car slowly drove out of the compound of the Public Security Bureau. That ever since she got in the car, Xiao Luo Bing had been thinking about the case. She looked out of the window and realized that something was wrong. Isn't this the way back? Of course. Hui Yinchi firmly nodded. The car made a detour and stopped in front of the villa they lived in before. He looked at Xia Luo Bing and said, Get off the car. Seeing that Xia Luo Bing was puzzled, Yinchi said, From now on, we will all stay here and go back to dinner every Saturday night. Really? Xia Luobing's eyes widened and her mood jumped with joy, are we all going to live here in the future? It wasn't that she didn't respect the old man. It was just that Hui Yinchi's mother was too difficult to deal with. Last time, she gave her a cold slap. In the future, 
there might be some disputes. Now, as long as she went back to eat once a week, the rest of the time would be free. This was great. N. Huiyinchi nodded. Seeing the joy on the woman's face, the corner of his mouth rose, go in. Xia Luobing hugged the folder, kicked off her shoes and leapt onto the sofa. She put the things in her hands aside, hugged the pillow and lazily squinted her eyes. Only then did she realize that her body had always been tight when she was in the Hua clan's old mansion. Only now did she finally relax completely. Because of Xia Luobing's cheerfulness, the atmosphere between the two of them unconsciously eased a lot, and the atmosphere in the room was also warm. Bing Bing, I'm hungry. Huiyinchi looked at the kitten dot like woman with a serious expression, Nianzai, I brought you out to live. Shouldn't you show me? Xia Luobing was in a good mood at the moment. Hearing Huiyinchi's words, she nodded happily, Is it okay to cook noodles? Ice, other than cooking noodles, do you have any other choice? Huiyinchi raised his eyebrows and smiled at Xia Luobing. She remembered that the meal she cooked last time was also boiled noodles. Of course, she also added eggs. Xiao Luobing was immediately embarrassed and embarrassed. Well, I only know how to cook noodles. Before the age of 16, her mother was still here, so she was reluctant to cook. After the age of 16, she entered the police academy, and had no chance. After work, she had no time, so it was already very difficult for her to cook noodles. Hui Yunqi stood up and held Xiao Luobing's hand, go buy some vegetables. Oh. Xia Luobing nodded. Probably because she was in a good mood, she did not pull her hand back and let him drag her. Xia Luobing thought that Hui Yunqi would take her to buy cooked food, but he didn't expect that he would go directly to the supermarket. Eggplant, beans, beef, Tomatoes, Xiao Luo Bing pushed the shopping cart behind Hui Yinqi and watched as he threw the vegetables on the shelf. She became more and more puzzled. Finally, she couldn't help but ask, Do you want to cook? After asking, she felt that she was mentally retarded. How could someone like Hui Yinqi cook? Are you going to eat clams? Hui Yinqi brought Xiao Luo Bing to the aquatic products area and turned around to ask, Where's the eel? Xiao Luobing nodded and hurriedly shook her head. Clams are fine, but eels aren't. Boss, an eel. Hui Yinqi and Xiao Luobing bought clams and were about to leave when someone wanted to buy eels. Originally, this had nothing to do with them, but for some reason, the unwilling eel actually slid out and followed the smooth floor to Xiao Luobing's feet. Ah! Xiao Luobing cried out in alarm. His face was pale and he instinctively jumped up. He pointed at something moving under his feet and screamed, Get it away! Get it away! The stall owner hurriedly grabbed the fleeing eel and pinched it in his hand. He looked at Xiao Luobing apologetically and said, Young lady, eels don't bite. Look! Don't look! Don't look! Take it away! Xia Luobing closed her eyes and waved her hand. She always felt cold, as if it was wrapped around her feet. When the surroundings became completely quiet, Xia Luobing, whose face was pale, heard a mocking voice beside his ear, Bing Bing, are you asking me to carry you back? Of course, I am very happy. Ah! Xia Luobing suddenly opened her eyes and realized that she was hanging on Huiyinchi like an octopus. Her posture was rather ambiguous and had attracted many shoppers to look over. She secretly screamed in her heart. She quickly got off Hui Yinchi and laughed dryly, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Hui Yinchi grabbed the shopping cart that Xia Luobing had thrown aside in panic and looked at Xia Luobing with raised eyebrows and said, You're actually afraid of a fish. Didn't you see that she looked like a snake? Xiao Luobing blurted out with a pale face. Hui Yinchi suddenly realized, so you're afraid of snakes. How is it? Can't I? Xia Luobing glared at Hui Yinchi and walked in front of him unhappily, not preparing to pay him any attention. Who says the captain can't be afraid of snakes? 
Such a cold, slippery thing, so disgusting Xia Luobing couldn't help but shiver. He ran out of the shopping mall and squatted at the entrance of the supermarket to draw circles waiting for Huiyinqi. Today, he really lost face at his grandmother's house. How can I be afraid of snakes? Huiyinqi muttered with a dark face. Only when a black shadow enveloped him did he raise his head and said in a bad mood, Can we go back now? Huiyinqi nodded, Well, go home and cook. Huiyinqi seemed to be in a good mood. Xia Luobing ignored Huiyinqi and climbed into the back seat. She turned her head away from the window, went out to buy some vegetables, and lost face. Bing Bing, isn't the back dark? Huiyinqi kindly reminded him. Seeing the woman's wrinkled face in the rearview mirror, he was in an inexplicable good mood. He really wasn't afraid at all because of this criminal police captain from his own family. Drive. I'm starving to death. Xiao Luobing's face darkened as she changed the topic, do you buy so many dishes for yourself? You can't have thrown them all into the pot and cooked them into a chowder, right? Huiyinshi was in a good mood and the corner of his mouth curved, can't I, otherwise, you can cook another pot of noodles as a staple food. Xiao Luobing's face darkened and she fell silent. She tried her best to reduce her sense of existence. Was it uncomfortable for Huiyinqi not to attack her for a moment? Back home, Xiao Luobing puts fruits and other things in the fridge and pushes ingredients like eggplant beans and beef in front of Huiyinqi, I look forward to your chowder. Since Bing Bing believes so much in my culinary skills, how can I disappoint you? Xiao Luobing shook her goosebumps. She took out the information she had brought back from the bureau and hid it on the sofa to study. She held a pen in her hand and occasionally circled it. However, her eyes occasionally glanced at the kitchen. She didn't know what Huiyinqi could do. Half an hour later, the woman who had been sitting on the sofa put aside the information in her hand, stretched her waist, tilted her head back slightly, rubbed her neck, and with a thought, she crept into the kitchen. She wanted to see what kind of delicious food Huiyinqi could cook. If she really couldn't identify the original ingredients in a pot, she had to reverse the situation. Oh, it smells good. Before she could reach the kitchen, a rich fragrance came to her nose. Xiao Luobing couldn't help but swallow her saliva. At the same time, a big question arose in her heart. Was it really Huiyinchi cooking? On the kitchen counter were brightly colored beans, eggplant, Stewed beef with tomatoes and stirred. Fried clams, you made it. Xiao Luobing swallowed her saliva and widened her eyes, her face filled with disbelief. How was this possible? Huiyunqi turned to look at Xiao Luobing's messy hair and raised his eyebrows. Did you do it? You actually know how to cook. Xiao Luobing looked incredulous. In her opinion, Huiyinchi should have grown up in her hands since she was young. She was the kind of person who could cook when someone put food into her mouth with just a finger. How could she cook? The most important thing was that the dishes were all colorful, fragrant, and delicious. I can't cook. Huiyinchi took the dishes to the dining table and looked at Xia Luobing. The recipe I just found on my phone. He said carelessly. Ha! Huh. Xia Luobing lowered his head and looked at the fried clam that was summoning her. He couldn't help but taste it. It tasted no worse than the chef in a five-dot-star restaurant. Huiyinchi, if the company goes bankrupt, you can become a chef now. Xia Luobing said sincerely, and she can definitely be a chef in a five-dot-star restaurant. You want my company to go bankrupt so badly. Huiyinchi placed the staple food in front of Xia Luobing and said with a dark face, your favorite steamed dumplings with three delicious stuffing. Xiao Luobing widened her eyes and pointed at the things on the plate, her voice trembling, don't tell me you made this too. My god, her little heart won't be able to take it. What kind of freak was Huiyinchi? It's from the supermarket. Huiyinchi said stiffly, hurry up and eat. Xiao Luobing nodded her head repeatedly. Facing the delicious dishes on the table, 
her appetite was great and she was satisfied with the food. After the meal, she took the initiative to stand up and tidy up the dishes. I'll go wash the dishes. Since Hui Yinchi had cooked a table of dishes for her to eat, she would definitely show off. Hui Yinchi did not stop her. She watched the woman wash the dishes happily and her mood became extremely relaxed. It would be good if she could get along with him like this forever. A lot of information was scattered on the sofa. Hui Yinchi raised his eyebrows and put the items away. He was stunned when he looked at the photo of the drug traffickers on the information. He reached out his finger and picked up the information. David, Southeast Asian drug lord, wanted for A. Don't touch my information. Xia Luobing hurriedly grabbed the information and held it in his arms. His eyes widened, this is a confidential document. Don't touch it. Chapter 76 Snake You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 76 Snake Hui Yinchi put away his doubts and said mockingly, Bing Bing, are you worried that I'm colluding with a drug trafficking gang? What if? Xia Luo Bing glared at Hui Yinchi and muttered after thinking for a while, but if President Huo went to sell drugs, it would probably become world. Shocking news. Hui Yinchi glanced at Xia Luo Bing and patted the seat next to her indicating for her to sit beside him, I have something to tell you. Speak. Xiao Luo Bing pulled a chair and sat opposite Hui Yinchi, maintaining a safe distance. I'll listen to you here. Yinchi Hu pressed his eyebrows and said with a serious expression, is your mission this time to capture David? This is a secret. Xia Luo Bing had a serious expression and did not intend to reveal this matter to Hui Yinchi. Hui Yinchi was quite frustrated when he saw that the woman was also on guard against him. He frowned and said, David, he is. All right, let's not talk about this. Xia Luo Bing anxiously interrupted Hui Yinchi. This was a secret activity of the bureau. She was worried that she might accidentally slip her lips, so avoiding this topic was the wisest choice. Hui Yinchi knitted his brows tightly. It took a long time for him to relax. He glanced at the little woman and stood up. All right, then let's go take a shower and rest now. Shall we take a shower? The corner of Xia Luobing's mouth twitched, his face full of embarrassment. How much did such a simple sentence mean? Well, I have to work overtime to read the information. Xia Luobing lowered his head and said sullenly. After thinking for a while, he gathered his courage and looked at Yin Chi Ho, we had to live together in the old mansion. We don't want to stay here anymore, do we? Sleeping in half a bed every day is uncomfortable, okay. However, based on Hui Yin Chi's personality, he shouldn't agree to her conditions, right? All right, you sleep in the master bedroom. Hui Yinchi glanced at Xia Luo Bing and agreed in surprise, if only I didn't scream when I encountered something like an eel at night. Ah. Xia Luo Bing looked around in panic, and immediately realized that the other party was teasing her. She gritted her teeth angrily, Hui Yinchi, I want to know if your eel can climb to the second floor. Well, even thinking about it made my bones stand on end. There are more trees around here, and it's spring. It's time for hibernating snakes to wake up and find food, so you know. Hui Yinchi raised his eyebrows at Xia Luo Bing, but it doesn't matter. Call me whenever you need help. After saying that, Hui Yinchi turned around and pushed the door to the side. However, a small hand grabbed her chin and lifted the corner of her mouth. She turned around and smiled, Bing Bing, what's wrong with you? Xia Luobing's face was ashen and he scolded Hui Yinchi hundreds of times in his heart, but the expression on his face was so embarrassing that he was about to die. Well, let's sleep in the same bed. That side bedroom hasn't been cleaned up yet. In a few days, she will be stunned. If a snake really crawls over, wouldn't she be frightened to death? It doesn't matter. I can clean it up. It'll be fine soon. No, Xia Luobing's face darkened as he pulled Hui Yinchi into the master bedroom. 
because he couldn't see the road with his back to the door, he tilted his feet and leaned backwards. He immediately cried out in his heart, this is doomed. Even if there was a thick blanket on the ground that could not be killed, being suppressed by Huiyinchi, this big fellow, would still cost him half of his life. Even if this year was the year of life, it wouldn't be so unlucky, right? Xiao Luobing's heart skipped a beat. She tightly closed her eyes and prepared for her bones to be crushed. However, after waiting for a long time, she did not feel the pain she had expected. Instead, she felt very soft and comfortable. Ha! Huh. Xia Luobing carefully opened her eyes and realized that she was wrapped in Huiyinchi's arms. She lay on his body and couldn't help but open her eyes wide. How could this be? Huiyinchi clasped the woman on his body and helplessly frowned, Bing Bing, shouldn't you ask if you've crushed me? Just at the critical moment, Huiyinchi hurriedly stretched out his hand to pull her closer to his embrace. However, he didn't expect that he would rush too far into his embrace. He was also brought down, so he could only stretch out his hand to grab her into his embrace first. He became Xia Luobing's meat cushion. Um. Are you alright? Xia Luobing looked at Huiyinchi, her ears burning. After thinking for a while, she added, I'm not very heavy, am I? Huiyinchi nodded. Xia Luobing was very tall, but she was really light. Shouldn't he let her eat more delicious food? I'll pull you up. Xia Luobing flipped over slightly, wanting to send Huiyinchi off, but when she sensed the things beneath her, her face instantly turned red with embarrassment. She quickly stood up and glared at Huiyinchi, rogue. How could she not know what was that hard thing that had just been against her? Huiyinchi closed his eyes and took a deep breath, trying to suppress the desire to roll out of his body. Only then did he open his eyes and slowly stand up from the ground with an innocent expression, normal physiological reaction, bing bing, you can't blame me. The two of them lay on the same bed every day, smelling her scent. Seeing someone close at hand who couldn't be touched, he was also very tired. Are you blaming me? Xia Luobing stared at Huiyinchi with a dark face. She gritted her teeth and said, go lie down on the side. What snakes? If the snake could crawl into the neighborhood, wouldn't the property here be closed? She had just lost her mind, so she was fooled by him. All right. Huiyunchi nodded in agreement. If he was still sleeping in the same bed tonight, he would definitely not be able to sleep all night. Huiyunchi looked at the angry woman and felt a little helpless. He walked to the door and smiled, bing bing, tomorrow night is the 60th anniversary celebration of the Hua Corporation. If you want to attend, I'll pick you up. 60th Anniversary Xia Luobing was shocked, but thinking about the 60th anniversary of the Hua Corporation, it was really not easy. As the wife of the president, she should naturally step forward and say, okay, what clothes do I need to wear? Although it was the daughter of the Xia Corporation, she had spent all her time on catching criminals or going to catch criminals. She did not participate in those celebrity banquets at all, so of course she was not interested. However, the occasion tomorrow was very important. She still had to make sure that she did not make any mistakes or get caught by Lu Yen and would cause trouble again. Thinking of meeting Lu Yen tomorrow, Xia Luobing immediately felt that it would be bad if he quarreled in front of so many people. I'll pick you up tomorrow. I'll be ready for everything else. Huiyinchi said. He reached out to pinch Xia Luobing's cheek and smiled. Good night. You. Xia Luobing helplessly tossed herself onto the bed. Her mood was inexplicably much better. The dark clouds shrouding her heart seemed to have slowly dissipated, and the sunlight was slowly seeping in. Right now, Huiyinchi and I are getting along fairly well, so after half a year, can the two of them still be friends after they separate? So complicated. Xiao Luobing pulled the blanket over her head and didn't move for a long time. Huiyinchi returned to his side bed, his palm still smelling of Xiao Luobing ice, the corner of his mouth curved. However, 
Thinking of that very important matter, he immediately dialed Yi Xiaochen's phone and said in a low voice, Dai Heng is still alive. The person on the other end of the phone obviously paused, and then the cup fell to the ground. After a long time, he heard Yi Xiaochen's incredulous voice, What's going on? When they were studying in the United States, Hui Yinqi, Yi Xiaochen and Dai Heng were best friends, but many things happened afterwards, so much so that the three of them became enemies. David's personality was extreme, and they all thought that he died in the car explosion. The picture of David Yinchi saw just now was Dai Heng, and the mole on his left eyebrow was exactly the same. Be careful lately. Hui Yinchi said in a deep voice. After thinking for a while, he added, Do you think Ji Wei is still alive? Yi Xiaochen watched silently as the water on the table spread out. Then, it fell onto the carpet with a tick. I don't know, Yi Xiaochen said. After the car exploded, firefighters came to extinguish the fire, but the fire was too big. It took two hours to extinguish the fire, and the people on board were burnt to ashes. We always suspected that David wasn't dead, so isn't Ji Wei also alive? Hui Yunqi's voice was very soft, as if he was muttering to himself, but if she wasn't dead, where would she go? Yi Xiaochen answered the phone with his other hand and said calmly, even if you are alive, you are not the same person as you were three years ago, so you must be careful. After hanging up the phone, Yi Xiaochen entered the bedroom. Even without turning on the light, he still took out a book from the drawer in the room. The first page contained a picture of a young child, bright eyes, straight black hair, like a ceramic doll. Ji Wei. The man murmured, as if he was spitting out two words from the depths of his soul. Yi Xiaochen, you have to smile more, or else you'll be so ugly. Yi Xiaochen, do you think I'm a good match for Yun Qi? Yi Xiaochen, can you make Yun Qi like me? In her memory, a girl had the most beautiful smile in the world. She loved Hui Yinqi like a brilliant sunflower chasing after the sun, while he quietly watched her happy appearance from the side. But then she died. Yi Xiaochen put the photo in the book and put it back in the drawer, gently closing it. Ji Wei, are you coming back? Yi Xiaochen glanced at the crescent moon outside the window and did not sleep for a night. The next afternoon, at four o'clock, Hui Yunqi took Xia Luobing out, so angry that Captain Xia, who was extremely dedicated to his work, wanted to beat her up. There's still an hour and a half left. This is leaving early, don't you know? Xia Luobing shouted with a dark face. She felt goosebumps all over her body when she thought of the ambiguous looks in her colleague's eyes. Especially Li Xiang's gloating expression, he really deserved to be beaten up. You can't blame me, Hui Yinqi said innocently. You need time to get your hair done, change your clothes, and put on your makeup. So troublesome. Xia Luobing felt her scalp go numb from hearing this. She had always been accustomed to being plain dot faced. Bing Bing, if you cooperate with me in this half a year, I might be able to let you go in half a year. Hui Yinqi glanced at the woman with a dark face and raised his eyebrows with a smile, if you make me feel bad. Xia Luobing hurriedly sat up straight and looked at Hui Yinqi's sincere assurance, deal. Originally, she was worried that Hui Yinqi would renege, but now that he took the initiative to propose it, it couldn't be any better. Hui Yinqi frowned slightly and felt rather uncomfortable in his heart. Although he took the initiative to mention it, he still felt very unhappy when he saw the happy and excited appearance of the women beside him. He had to fall in love with Xiao Luo Bing again in half a year, and then he couldn't get rid of her. After making up his mind, Hui Yinqi's lips curled into a cunning smile. He didn't believe that he could subdue the woman in front of him. Evan, put on Ice Bing's makeup. Hui Yinqi sat on the sofa, his slender legs stacked together. He touched his chin with one hand and smiled, I want that stunning effect. The corner of Xia Luobing's mouth twitched. She was about to refute, but seeing Hui Yinqi's finger contest with a six, she immediately swallowed the words that had already reached her mouth. Now that she was under the eaves, she could only lower her head. 
Chapter 77 Colluded in a single incident you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 77 Colluded in a single incident the colors of Xiao Luobing's clothes were very faint, and he also felt that she was very suitable for light colors. However, this time, he wanted to know what she looked like when she wore a seductive red. So gorgeous. Xia Luobing widened her eyes and firmly shook her head, too bright. What was she suited to wear such an ostentatious color? Bing Bing, you're not obedient again. Hui Yinchi looked at Xiao Luobing threateningly and nodded his head in satisfaction when he saw her take the clothes. That's right. Xiao Luobing went to the next room to change her clothes with a dark face and wore the high heels that Hui Yinchi had stuffed into her. Madame Hua is so beautiful. Ivan said in surprise. Hui Yinchi stared fixedly at Xia Luobing. The red chiffon cloth was covered with a layer of ugin yarn that was as light as clouds. A thin belt was tied around his slender waist. It was so beautiful that one couldn't breathe. How is it? Xia Luobing uneasily lowered her head and tugged at her clothes. She was uneasy. She had never worn such bright clothes before. Isn't she very ugly? Hui Yinchi walked over and grabbed the woman's hand. Her eyes became more and more stunned. The back of the gown was hollowed out to reveal her white back. However, because Xiao Luobing's hair was scattered on her back, she could not help but embrace her. Really ugly. Seeing Hui Yinchi's delay, Xia Luobing frowned and said, Then I'll replace him. Hui Yinchi grabbed the woman's hand and walked out of the door, his tone light and joyful, how could it be ugly? Not only was she not ugly, she was simply too beautiful. She was so beautiful that he couldn't help but regret it. Why would he let her woman dress so beautifully for others to see? Hui Yunqi and Xiao Luobing walked into the hall side by side and immediately attracted everyone's attention, especially Xiao Luobing. She was so beautiful that all women were jealous. Madam Hua, you are truly fortunate to have married such a beautiful daughter. In law, someone flattered Lu Yen and smiled. I heard that he is still the captain of the criminal police force. That's really good. However, someone immediately said, Isn't it too dangerous for the young madam of the Hua family to go out to catch criminals? Lu Yan's expression wasn't very good. However, it was the Hua Corporation's anniversary celebration. No matter how much she didn't like Xia Luobing, she had to protect her son's face. We don't know anything about young people. Follow them as long as my son is happy. That's the truth. These ladies were all good at steering when the wind blew, and their family's business still depended on the care of the Hua Corporation. They all picked up what Lu Yen liked to say. Because of his daughter marrying Hui Yinchi, Many people were looking for Xia Yen to toast and get close to him today. They all envied him for giving birth to such a good daughter. There were also many people who offered to have sex with the Xia Corporation. They also hoped that Xia Yen could help Hui Yinchi with a few good words. There were so many benefits to marrying Hui Yinchi, no wonder all the women in Si City wished to marry Hui Yinchi. Wang Xiaoman shuttled through the rich madams with the goblets in her hands. How about, we're ice, or, we're yinchi? She flew back and forth like a butterfly and enjoyed it endlessly. Luo Xian, don't always sit here motionless. Wang Xiaoman glared at her sullen daughter and said, don't tell me you want to miss such a good opportunity for nothing. On the 60th anniversary of the Hua Corporation, all the influential people in Si City had come. Looking around, they were all rich families. Even if they closed their eyes to catch one, their wealth wouldn't be much worse. Moreover, she had already greeted many people just now. Now that she had taken her daughter around, with their beauty, were they still worried that they wouldn't find a rich and powerful husband? Mom, can you stop meddling in my affairs? Xia Luobing frowned with displeasure. Ever since Hui Yinchi brought Xiao Luobing, her eyes could no longer move away from him. How could she have the mood to know any young geniuses now? I say, Luo Xian, you can't be foolish. 
one Xiao man knocked on her scarlet diamond dot studded fingernails and sat beside her daughter. She said earnestly, there is a small possibility that mom will help you snatch Yin Chi Hua, but you see that Yin Chi Hua has no interest in you at all. We can't pin all our hopes on one person. Xia Luoxin turned her head away and ignored Wang Xiaoman. Even if Hui Yinqi never looked at her properly, she still couldn't help but like him. You damn girl, did you hear me? Wang Xiaoman was really anxious. She threw the goblet onto the table and tugged at her daughter's arm. Seeing Xia Luobing's red eyes, she couldn't help but soften her heart. You said you. Xia Luobing's mood was gloomy and she said, Mom, can you leave me alone? Wang Xiaoman's face was filled with displeasure. In the end, she stood up with a livid face. If her daughter didn't do well, she would have to work harder. She picked up the red wine on the table and walked out with a smile, Mrs. Li, long time no see. Xiao Luobing looked at Hui Yinqi in the crowd with a disappointed expression. He was so shining that one could easily tell from the crowd. His concern for Xia Luobing made her go crazy with jealousy. She was clearly the one who fell in love with him first. Why did he marry Xia Luobing? Why? I didn't expect Luo Xian to fall in love with her brother. In. Law. Hearing the voice behind him, Xia Luoxin's heart tightened. He turned around and saw the person. He pulled down his face and said coldly, Feng Shua, what nonsense are you talking about? Because of Feng Shua's abandonment of Xia Luobing, she had never had a good impression of this man. Now that he had seen through her thoughts, she felt even more annoyed in her heart. Feng Shua didn't mind Xiao Luobing's attitude at all. He sat straight in the seat opposite her and took a sip of the scarlet red. Then, he stared at Xiao Luobing and said slowly, Luo Xian, you like Hui Yinqi. I'm not in the mood to listen to your nonsense. Xia Luoxin stood up with a cold face, but her heart was in a panic. Moreover, she felt a strong sense of danger from Feng Shuo. Luo Xian, if you want to get Hui Yinqi, I will be a good partner. Feng Shuo stared at the woman's face with a harmless smile, but his eyes clearly emitted a dangerous signal. Xia Luoxin frowned and hesitated in her heart. She knew that Feng Shua had never given up on Xia Luobing, so if he really cooperated, would he she really liked Yinqi very much. Now that she saw his happy appearance with Xia Luobing, she felt like she was drowning. Someone tossed her life. Saving straw. She instinctively wanted to catch him. You know, I've always liked ice. Feng Shua stared at Charlotte and smiled. If I can help you obtain Hui Yinqi, my wish can be fulfilled. Why shouldn't I be happy? Charlotte finally turned around and sat opposite Feng Shua. Her struggling eyes were already filled with determination, how can we cooperate? Hui Yinqi looked at the uncomfortable Xia Luobing beside him and curled his lips. He approached the woman's ear and whispered, If you feel bored, go find Yun Shi. However, don't run around. I'll bring you back later. All right. Xia Luobing nodded her head forcefully. She had never been so grateful to Hui Yinqi before. Hearing the compliments of those people, her hair went numb. However, she still had to wear a smile on her face to make her words and actions conform to the style of the CEO's wife. She was really tired to death. She had already seen Yun Shi and intoxicated sitting in a corner eating snacks and chatting, making people envious, jealous, and hateful. Now that they could be freed, it was really great. Xia Luobing slowly moved to an inconspicuous corner with the president's wife's posture. Before she could get intoxicated, she reached out and grabbed her wrist. She couldn't help but frown and look down to discover that it was Luo Xian. What's wrong with you? Xiao Luobing frowned. Although she wasn't close to this sister, she still treated him well. At the very least, cursing Feng Shua out at the beginning was very much to her liking. Sister, I'm a little uncomfortable. Xia Luobing's face was pale, and she looked pitifully at Xia Luobing, I want to go out and get some air. 
Xiao Luobing looked around and held Xiao Luoxin, go to the rooftop, I'll help you. Don't you want to accompany brother in dot law? Xiao Luoxin was full of caution. Xiao Luobing shook her head, I don't need it for the time being. I'll bring you there. There was an open dot air swimming pool on the rooftop of the hotel. The clear water made people see through it with a single glance. The lights fell in and swayed very much. Xia Luobing helped Xiao Luobing sit on a rattan chair by the pool, and she sat down on the side, rest here for a while. If you still feel unwell, go see a doctor. Sister, I'm sorry. Xia Luoxin looked at Xia Luobing with guilt. I met her brother Dotin Dot Law when I was in high school. At that time, I was young and ignorant, so when I saw him again, I had an idea that I shouldn't have. But my father taught me a lesson. I know that I was wrong. Can you forgive me? Xia Luobing couldn't help but frown. She didn't expect Luo Xian to say these words to her. She was stunned for a moment before she slowly said, I have dreams when I'm a teenager. I'm not angry with you. Looks like Hui Yinchi has really captured the hearts of many young girls. Xia Luo Bing scolded Hui Yinchi in her heart. She pulled the red dress on her body and looked at Xia Luo Xian and asked, Do you feel better? Much better. Xiao Luo Bing nodded her head and stood up. She smiled sweetly at Xiao Luo Bing, Sister, let's go back so that brother in law won't find you in a hurry. When the two of them turned back, they happened to pass by the pool. Xia Luo Bing was walking outside. Suddenly, the soles of his feet were unstable and he fell straight into the pool. With a put on sound, a lot of water splashed out. Sister. Xiao Luobing shouted and extended her hand to Xiao Luobing, hurry up. It was still early spring. Although the room was very warm, the open pool was bone dot chilling. The most unfortunate thing was that Xiao Luobing fell in. His calf was cramped and he couldn't swim at all. He sank uncontrollably, help. Sister. Charlotte's face was deathly pale as she looked around and shouted, help. Put on. A blue figure jumped into the pool and pulled Xiao Luo Bing towards the shore. Sister Dadin Dot Law, what happened to you? Xia Luo Bing's lips had already turned purple from the cold. She frowned and smiled bitterly, I accidentally fell into the pond. My leg just happened to cramp. Does the heavens want to freeze her to death or drown her? Because of Xiao Luo Bing's shout, many people rushed over from the hall. Hui Yinchi was the first to bear the brunt. He saw the two women who had already climbed up and took off their jackets to wrap around Xia Luobing. At the same time, Yi Xiaochen also put the jacket on Hui Yinchi's body. Xia Luobing, did you die of stupidity in your previous life? Hui Yinchi was furious. He had just let her leave his line of sight for less than five minutes before she fell into the pond. It was really troublesome. Chapter 78 Luo Bing is sick you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 78 Luo Bing is sick, a Chu. Xia Luo Bing sneezed heavily and looked at Hui Yinchi with a wronged expression, I'm already like this. Do you think I have any conscience? Hui Yinchi didn't care about greeting the guests and picked up Xia Luo Bing to go to the hotel room. He had to take a hot bath in such a cold day, or else it would freeze. Yi Xiaochen tugged at Hui Yinxi, you're quite brave. Hui Yinxi looked at Yi Xiaochen and pulled the clothes on his body. He said indifferently, I'll go change first. I'll wash your suit and return it to you. Yi Xiaochen was stunned for a moment. He watched helplessly as Hui Yinxi walked in front of him. His heart was empty. She had always liked to stick to him and act coquettish and mocking, but she was the only one who was not so polite. She was alienated like a stranger. Little girl. Yi Xiaochen frowned and shook his head. He smiled bitterly and left the rooftop. Xia Luoxin was still in shock as she sat down on the chair. She almost drowned just now. But why didn't he drown? 
Xiao Luobing, what are you doing? Feng Shua flashed out of the corner and shouted at Xiao Luobing, why are you so stupid? According to his plan, he should be the one who rushed into the pond to retrieve Xiao Luobing's ice. Why was it Hui Yinxi? Xiao Luobing stared at Feng Shua and sneered, you still have the nerve to ask me. Where did you go? If I didn't shout for help, Xia Luobing would really drown in it. She deliberately stepped on the back of Xia Luobing's gown and let her fall into the pool. After Feng Shua carried her out, she would lure the people from the hall over, and then Feng Shua's expression was gloomy. Just as he was about to arrive, he was stopped by Hu Zhengxiong and asked a few questions about the company. However, he was delayed. All right. In the future, we should all pay attention. Feng Shua said irritably, his face full of displeasure. Charlotte left in a hurry with a pale face. This was the first time she had done such a thing. She was so flustered. Everyone in the hall knew that Hui Yinchi's wife and sister had fallen into the pool, and many people were discussing this matter. I'm really uneasy. Lu Yan's face was ashen. A good anniversary celebration made Xia Luobing's chickens fly and dogs jump, and she couldn't live peacefully. Wang Xiaoman just happened to hear Lu Yan's complaint when she passed by. Her mind stirred and she sat down with a glass of wine in her hand. Why is Mrs. Hua here alone? Wang Xiaoman smiled fawningly, our ice has caused you a lot of trouble, haven't we? Because Hua Zhengxiong had brought a illegitimate child back from outside, Lu Yan had always had a bad expression on her face towards the women of Xiao San. Seeing Wang Xiaoman approach, her mood was already very unhappy. Hearing her mention Xia Luobing, her expression became even uglier. I wonder how your Xia clan trained their daughter. Lu Yan mocked, I'm not a real mother. My child has been educated like this. Wang Xiaoman could not help but feel her disgust for Xia Luobing from Lu Yan's words, and her heart was filled with joy. Dot, Madame Hua, when Mother Bing Bing died, she was already 16 years old. Why would she let me discipline her? Wang Xiaoman looked helpless and aggrieved, that child has a very big temper, and her father has no choice. Lu Yan snorted coldly, I really don't know why my son likes such a bad woman. Not only is her character bad, she can't even have a child. When Wang Xiaoman heard this, her eyes lit up and she had a plan in her heart. She stood up embarrassedly and said, I still have something to do over there, so I won't disturb Mrs. Hua. It turned out that Xia Luobing couldn't have children anymore. This was really great news. How could a woman who had married into a wealthy family sit steadily in the position of young madam without a child? It seemed that their Luo Xian really had a chance. Hui Yinchi hugged Xiao Luobing and kicked open the door of the hotel. He kicked her back with his heel and threw her into the bathroom. She started to let the water go. The dress on Xiao Luobing's body was like a red lotus blooming on the water, swaying beautifully. I can take a bath myself. You can go out first. Xia Luobing whispered as she looked at Hui Yinchi, who had always been silent with a dark face. She was the one who fell into the icy water. Why was Yinchi's face so long? Freak. Achu. Xiao Luobing sneezed coldly, her nose stuffed uncomfortably. Hui Yinchi said with a cold face, you can fall into the pool after leaving for a while. Now that I'm gone, will you fall into the bathtub and drown yourself? How? Xiao Luobing retorted with her eyes wide open, I can swim, okay. Why didn't you swim just now? Xia Luobing's face darkened and he said sullenly, my leg is cramping. She was really unlucky to be able to catch up with such a rare event in 10,000 years. Hui Yinchi said, yes, and threw the towel on the table, take off your clothes and soak for half an hour. After saying that, the man went out with a cold face. Just now, when he saw her lips turn purple and her entire body tremble, the nerves in his brain tensed up to the point that they almost broke off. And this woman seemed to have never happened before. It would be strange if he wasn't angry. 
Xiao Luo Bing was so sleepy that she felt that the water was a little cold that she quickly pulled on the towel and wrapped herself around her naked body. She opened the door and stretched out her head to see Hui Yinqi was not around. She quickly ran out and got under the quilt, wrapped up like a silkworm pupa. Achu. Xia Luo Bing rubbed her nose and felt that her eyes were hot. She stretched out her hand and frowned, I think I have a fever. I wonder what happened to Hui Yinqi. Achu. You can't even protect yourself. Are you still in the mood to care about others? Hui Yinqi came in with a paper bag. Looking at Xia Luobing's flushed face, he frowned and said, Get dressed. I'll take you to the hospital. Xia Luobing waved her hand and said, It's not that delicate. I'll just sleep for a while. You want me to help you dress? Hui Yinqi threatened with a dark face and leaned towards Xia Luobing with a paper bag. You know I won't mind. Xia Luobing subconsciously pulled the blanket and wrapped himself tighter. He said sullenly, I'll change it myself. You go out and wait for me first. Xia Luobing, stop talking. Hui Yunqi turned around and urged impatiently, hurry up and change your clothes. You have a fever. Xiao Luobing took out a white-collared knitted sweater and polished white jeans from her paper bag and put them on her body. At the same time, she looked at Hui Yinqi vigilantly, in case he would suddenly turn around. All right. Xiao Luobing put on low dot heeled leather shoes, cut her hair, and said in a hoarse voice, Let's go. Hui Yinqi picked up the thick coat that had been sent over long ago and wrapped it around Xiao Luobing. Then, he held her to his side and frowned. This woman really didn't let him worry. I have a high fever of 39 degrees. I'll be hospitalized for an four drip. The doctor took Xia Luobing's temperature and came to a conclusion. Xia Luobing felt that he was really unlucky. He dressed beautifully to attend Mother Zhou's celebration and was actually able to come to the hospital. Today is the company's anniversary. Is it all right if you don't go back? Xia Luobing asked in a hoarse voice, feeling a little guilty. Hui Yinqi frowned, don't talk. But. Xia Luobing was still worried. Seeing the man's expression, she changed the topic, how is Yunqi? Is he having a fever? Xia Luobing, there's someone taking care of the company's affairs, and Yunqi also has someone to take care of her. Be honest. Hui Yinqi said with a dark face. Xia Luobing turned her back to Hui Yinqi. This man's temper was getting worse and worse. However, in order to leave smoothly after six months, she could only temporarily endure it. She was depressed. President Hua, something's wrong with the Ten Miles Golden Beach Project. Secretary Zhang took Hui Yinqi's phone and rushed into the ward in panic, someone died. Xia Luobing abruptly turned around and was pressed down by Hui Yinqi on the needle's wrist. He frowned and said, don't move. Hui Yinqi picked up the phone and didn't know what the person on the other end had said. The man's expression instantly became dark and frighteningly cold. You have something to deal with first. I can handle it by myself. Seeing that Hui Yinqi hung up the phone with a worried expression, Xia Luobing hurriedly said, it's good that you handle the company's affairs. After spending so much time with Hui Yinqi, she knew that the 10 miles golden beach of the Hua Corporation was an annual big project. Now that there was a mistake and he needed to personally act as the CEO, she thought that the problem must be very serious. N. Hui Yinqi looked at Xia Luobing and nodded. He turned around to look at the secretary beside him and said, You stay. No need, no need. Xia Luobing hurriedly shook her head and looked at Hui Yinqi with her brows knitted. She said, if you let little Zhang drive you over, I'll just call and intoxicate you. It was night, and Yinqi was anxious that it was not safe to drive. Seeing that Hui Yinqi still insisted, Xia Luobing said, it's more convenient to be intoxicated and take care of me. Moreover, she can accompany me home tonight. Don't worry about dealing with the company's affairs. 
Huiyinchi picked up Xia Luobing's phone and found the intoxicated number, intoxicated, this is Huiyinchi. Bing Bing is at the people's hospital. Please come over and accompany her. All right, thank you. Yu Xia Luobing didn't know whether to laugh or cry, but he knew that Huiyinchi was also thinking for himself. He looked at the man and said, can you rest assured now? Yes. Huiyinchi finally nodded turned around, and left the ward. He coldly instructed the secretary behind him, call a video conference immediately. Xia Luobing couldn't help but frown when he heard Hui Yinchi's voice getting farther and farther away from his secretary. It seemed that this matter was really serious. He didn't know if Hui Yinchi could handle it Hui Yinchi opened his Maybach and sat in the back seat with a cold face listening to the opinions of the project department and the shareholders of the company. His expression became gloomier and gloomier. President Hua, this nail door has been entangled for a long time and has made many unreasonable demands. We can't be blamed for all of this. Li Xiaoren glared at him with a pair of small eyes and was extremely angry, these poor ghosts just want to get rich overnight and go crazy. Hui Yinchi pursed his thin lips and his face was ashen as he waited for the others to speak. This incident was our negligence but it was also their fault. If it really gets out of hand, we can go straight to the judicial process. Feng Shua said with a serious expression. He was the direct person in charge of the 10 Miles Golden Beach project, and the progress of the project had always been very good. His prestige in the company had also increased day by day because of this project. However, he did not expect that when he saw that the project was about to be completed, such a thing would cause his efforts to be wasted. It's already a big mess now. Hui Yinchi's face was cold as he said stiffly, can the judicial process save the company's losses? Ten miles Golden Beach passed through a residential area. According to the normal agreed price, the Hua Corporation offered the residents compensation accordingly. Many people moved away, and only one family was nailed there. The purpose was to ask for more money. There had been a lot of trouble before, but for some reason, they had committed suicide this time. Our compensation price is already much higher than the market price. They are making trouble for no reason. As long as we go through the judicial process, we can clarify the reputation of the group. Feng Shua frowned. He was more anxious than anyone to resolve this matter. Hui Yinchi frowned as she stared at the faces of the others on the tablet and said coldly, others. What do you think? Li Xiaoren cleared his throat and hesitated for a moment before slowly saying, President Hua, I think President Feng is right. We can't tolerate such people at all, otherwise others will follow suit in the future and cause endless troubles to the group. Chapter 79 I'm going to take a look you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 79 I'm going to take a look, is that what everyone thinks? Hui Yinchi said coldly. Even though it was across the internet, it still made the others feel suffocating. After a moment of silence, Hui Yinchi said coldly, now that the other party is dead, regardless of what the truth is and whether the other party is making trouble or not, they have already become a weak group in the eyes of the public. What do you think is the benefit of going through the judicial process for the company now? Retrieve money. What about the reputation of the Hua Corporation? Do you still need to do the follow-up work for the 10 miles Golden Beach? Feng Shua frowned and said unwillingly, but this kind of atmosphere cannot be encouraged, otherwise, there will be endless troubles in the future. According to what you said, this nail farmer has been causing trouble for a long time. Why didn't anyone mention it in the progress report of the 10 miles Golden Beach? Hui Yinchi said coldly, his expression getting uglier and uglier. Finally, he stared at Feng Shua and said, President Feng, what's going on? Feng Shua's expression stiffened. He felt the pressure in Feng Shua's eyes, but he wasn't willing to admit defeat. He gritted his teeth and said, I don't think it's necessary to write such a small matter into the progress report. A small matter. Then does President Feng think it's still a small matter now? Hui Yinchi's tone became colder and colder. 
Do you know that such a trivial matter is likely to destroy the 10 miles Golden Beach project? Furthermore, the group will suffer a huge loss. President, now is not the time to be angry. Let's think of a solution first. Li Xiaoren came out to make things right with a worried expression, stabilize that family first. Hui Yinchi looked at Feng Shua and said coldly, pass me all the information about that household. Immediately. Turning off the video phone, Feng Shua kicked over the vase beside him, and the porcelain that depicted the blue and white flowers instantly turned into a pile of fragments. Now is not the time to be angry. Li Xiaoren narrowed his eyes as he looked at Feng Shua and slowly said, pass the information to President Hua first. We'll talk about it after the matter is settled. Otherwise, the interests of the group will be affected, and it will definitely be us who will be unlucky. Feng Shua clenched his fingers tightly. He opened the folder with a dark face and sent Hui Yinchi an email with the information he had just investigated. Then, he stood up and said, let's go to the scene as well. Hui Yinchi got out of the car, and the scene was in chaos. There were more than 10 wreaths placed in the center of the 10 miles project. There were also large black words written on the white banner, Hua Corporation is forcing people to die, heaven's will is unbearable. A woman with five or six children knelt on the ground, crying and making noise. The corpse beside her was covered in white cloth, and the smell of burning paper money was wreathed around the scene. Before getting out of the car, Hui Yinchi had already investigated all the information about this family and understood it in his heart. He glanced at the secretary behind him and said, Xiao Zhang, Bring that woman to the project office and tell her that she is talking about compensation. Hui Yunqi turned around and entered the project. Feng Shua and Li Xiaoren also happened to get off the car. They were walking over with serious expressions. The situation was worse than they thought. A large number of reporters had already rushed over to surround the two of them. President Feng, it is said that you are the person in charge of the 10 Miles Golden Beach project. Now that something like this has happened, how do you plan to deal with it? The black microphone reached in front of Feng Shuo. President Feng, did the Hua Corporation force someone to death? Do you feel uneasy doing this? May I ask how you plan to explain this to the families of the deceased? So serious. In the ward, intoxicated and Xiao Luo Bing were shocked to see the news on TV. No wonder Hui Yinchi hurriedly called me to accompany you. Intoxicated, he poured a glass of water for Xiao Luobing inside, but don't worry too much. Hui Yinchi's methods are very powerful. Xiao Luobing stared at the TV screen and searched for the bustling crowd. She frowned and said, Why didn't you see Hui Yinchi? The scene was so chaotic, could it be that something else had happened? After such a long time, he should have arrived long ago. The people on TV were crying, scrambling for the ground, big banners, wreaths, reporter Xia Luobing's heart suddenly panicked. He suddenly sat up and pressed the button at the bedside to call the nurse, pull out the needle for me. Luo Bing, what are you doing? You still have a fever. Don't move, be careful of the blood. I want to take a look. Xia Luobing felt intense unease in her heart. She had never felt like she had to go over and see how Hui Yinchi was doing. The scene was so chaotic. What if something unexpected happened? This thought came to her mind like a big hand that fiercely grabbed her heart and forcefully tore it apart. An uneasy feeling forced her to take a look. Luobing, Hui Yinchi will definitely be able to handle this matter. You should obediently inject the fluid and don't move. Thinking of Hui Yinchi's instructions, he said warmly, you're still sick. Even if you go over, you can only cause trouble, right? When the nurse heard the summons, she hurriedly ran in and looked at Xiao Luo Bing and intoxicated. She raised her eyebrows in displeasure, what happened to you guys? Nurse, pull out the needle immediately. Xia Luobing had already begun to take her coat with one hand and reached out to the nurse with the other. Immediately. There were some unhappy nurses who were frightened by Xiao Luobing's icy gaze. 
Their faces turned pale and they took out a cotton swab from their pockets and pulled out the needle. At the same time, they did not forget to remind them, you asked for the needle to be pulled yourself. If anything unexpected happens, it has nothing to do with our hospital. After saying that, she even took out a piece of paper and asked Xiao Luobing to sign a guarantee. She could tell that she was frightened by the doctor's troublesome time. Intoxicated, you do this. Xia Luobing grabbed her coat and hurriedly ran out. She didn't want to waste a minute, but when she arrived at the hospital gate, she suddenly remembered that she had come in Huiyinchi's car. Now, she could only take a taxi. Fortunately, she chased after her desperately and glared at her, I'll drive you there. On the way, Xia Luobing called Li Xiang and said, something happened at the Ten Miles Golden Beach. Bring a few colleagues over to maintain order. Don't let the incident get bigger and cause more impact. Bing Bing, you are sincere to Hui Yun. Intoxicated, she looked at Xiao Luo Bing with a worried expression and joked to ease the atmosphere. You really like him, don't you? Xiao Luo Bing was embarrassed. She felt a little excited. However, she quickly comforted herself. If something went wrong with Hui Yun Chi, she would not be able to leave smoothly after six months. Therefore, she was only worried about him now. Helping him was also helping her. Yes, that's it. After 10 o'clock in the evening, there was no traffic jam on the road. In addition, the location of 10 Miles Golden Beach was a little remote, so the two of them drove smoothly. They would arrive at their destination in 10 minutes. Bang! The car made a muffled noise and shook violently. Xiao Luo Bing, who was deep in thought, leaned forward abruptly and almost hit her head on the windshield. Intoxication followed with a scream. Dot, what's the matter? Xia Luobing covered her beating heart and forced herself to look at the intoxicated side. Did she hit something? I just changed my car this afternoon. You sit here and don't move. I'll go and see what's going on first. He said with a bitter face. I'll accompany you. Xiao Luo Bing said as she unbuckled her seatbelt. You still have a fever. Just stay in the car. Intoxicated, she opened the door and saw that something had hit her car. Normally, Xia Luo Bing would have noticed something was amiss, and then she would have intoxicated herself and quickly turned the car around to leave. But now, she rushed over to Hui Yinchi's side with her mind full of thoughts, and didn't notice that there was an inexplicable obstacle on the road. Bang! The car door was suddenly opened. Before Xiao Luobing could react, someone got into the car and held a dagger against Xiao Luobing's neck. Don't move. The coldness of the metal next to her neck caused Xiao Luobing to shiver. However, it was the squad leader who rushed over from the barrage of bullets, so she quickly calmed down and said, What are you guys doing? Cooperate with us well, otherwise, the man pressed his knife hard, and a bloody line appeared on Xia Luobing's fair neck. At this time, another person got into the car through the back door and put a pistol on the back of Xia Luobing's head. The man in the driver's seat put away his knife and started the car quickly. Bastards! What are you doing? Ice ice. Intoxicated, she slapped the glass of the car, tears streaming down her cheeks, but she could only watch as the car drove away with Xia Luo Bing. Ice Tao Zui stamped her feet anxiously. Her mobile phone and wallet were all in the car. Now that she was so far away from the city, what should she do? The car quickly turned around and drove towards the suburbs. Xiao Luo Bing looked out of the window into the darkness and said in a low voice, What are you doing? We take money to do things, so Officer Xia shouldn't ask so much. The man in the car revealed a golden tooth as he spoke, sparkling in the darkness of the carriage. Xia Luo Bing frowned, You know who I am. Then you should know what kind of crime it is to kidnap a state official, right? However, when these people saw that they dared to do such a thing, they probably weren't afraid of it sure enough, the genius had a disdainful expression on his face, what I do is buy and sell my head on my belt. 
I don't care what kind of public servant you are. Big brother, we've just contacted each other. The boat leaves tomorrow morning. We can't leave tonight. The man behind interrupted, we're going to be in City C for the night. The big golden tooth, yes, sound, hit the steering wheel and stepped on the brakes, parked the car in front of a bungalow, pushed Xiao Luobing who was tied up and got off the car, the damp air pounced on his face. Xia Luobing frowned. There should be a large area of water here. In addition to what the two of them said about the boat just now, this place should be near a port in Sea City. However, he didn't know if he could escape smoothly later, what are you looking at? Get in. The man pushed Xia Luobing into the house and threw her to the ground. He smiled and said, Officer Xia, you really can't blame us for this. If you want to blame us, you can only blame yourself for offending too many people. Xia Luobing frowned and didn't say anything, but his mind was rapidly searching for such a person in the cases he had worked on these years, big brother, tonight we, the man behind him closed the door and looked at Xiao Luobing with a wretched expression. The genie kicked the man with a dark face, don't make any fuss about it, so as not to cause any complications. After tonight, stuff this woman onto the ship, we'll take the money and leave. With the money, what kind of woman do you want to sleep with? The man nodded obediently, understood, big brother. The two men went to the next room. Xia Luobing leaned against the wall and quietly untied the rope. Suddenly, he heard the door next door ring. He quickly stopped moving and calmly looked at the approaching golden tooth and said coldly, where exactly are you taking me? In order to let us sleep peacefully, Officer Xia should take a good rest. De Genia held the syringe in his hand and walked over with a cold smile. What are you doing? Xia Luobing stared fixedly at the syringe in De Goldia's hand, his eyes flashing with a cold light. Damn it, he was only a little bit away from undoing the rope. The big golden tooth sneered and fiercely stabbed the needle into Xia Luobing's arm. The numbness quickly spread. Shit. Chapter 80 Something Happened to Xia Luobing You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 80 Something Happened to Xia Luobing At this moment, Xia Luobing was really scared. If she really fainted, who knew what would happen? Hui Yinchi, Xia Luobing thought that she had been kidnapped last time. She was also in such a dark room. Hui Yinchi kicked open the door and knocked down a few people to save her. Will she be able to do it this time? Xia Luobing leaned against the wall, facing the window. He could see the lighthouse in the distance shining with light. His eyelids grew heavier and heavier, and his consciousness gradually wandered. He slowly lowered his head. Yin Chi Hua. Come and save me in the office of the 10 Miles Golden Beach Project team, Hui Yin Chi flipped through the information in his hand and glanced at the bitter dot looking woman in her forties. Her fingernails were stuffed with black mud, and she was sitting opposite him with her head lowered in embarrassment. Yang Jinhua. Hui Yin Chi looked at the woman opposite him and frowned, sit down. When the woman who had just been crying outside saw Hui Yin Chi, she felt the pressure in the man's eyes and couldn't help but tremble. She was so trembling that she didn't dare to move. Sit down, let's talk about the compensation this time. Yin Chi looked at her and continued, You have six children. Perhaps thinking of his own child, Yang Jinhua's eyes flashed with determination. He took the courage to sit opposite Hui Yin Chi and cried out loudly, You forced my man to death. How are we supposed to live as orphans and widows? My God! Li Jinfu is your husband. He contracted lung cancer a year ago. Hui Yinchi flipped through the information in her hand and said indifferently, as if she wasn't affected at all by the woman's howls. I had a re-examination at the central hospital a month ago. Yang Jinhua was stunned for a moment. Obviously, he did not expect Hui Yinchi to know so much. He became timid and lacked confidence. You, you. Hui Yinchi frowned, actually, we can go through the judicial process and undergo an autopsy. Naturally, we know how Li Jinfu died. 
ask the police to intervene in the investigation. This matter will soon come to light. You forced him to die. We don't want to move, you have to make us move. You forced him to die. Yang Jinhua panicked, especially when he heard that he had to dissect the corpse. In the hearts of many people, it was impossible to live peacefully after death. Hui Yinchi wasn't anxious either. He just calmly looked at the woman opposite him. Listening to her, he placed his slender fingers on the table and knocked on the table in a very rhythmic manner. Then let's go through the judicial process. If we need compensation, we will definitely not refuse. Hui Yinchi said indifferently. He glanced at the woman opposite him and added, but I'm sure that the compensation stipulated by the law will not be higher than ours. After all, the deceased had already contracted cancer before he died. Yang Jinhua looked at Hui Yinchi with a panicked expression and blurted out, If you don't give me money, how can I feed my child? Her man did not live long, so he drank pesticides to commit suicide. In the suicide note left for her, she asked her to carry his corpse to Madame Hua for money to raise a child in the future. That was why the current incident happened. However, she did not expect that Yinchi Hua was not so easy to fool. The Hua family has a special fund to help poor children from primary school to university graduation. If you cooperate with us, your children will receive a good education. Hui Yunqi saw that the woman was silent and continued, of course, other than that, we will also give you a portion of the demolition money that should be given to you to ensure your and your child's lives. Yang Jinhua looked at Hui Yunqi with a timid expression of disbelief, are you telling the truth? Of course. Hui Yunqi nodded and promised. After reaching an agreement, Yang Jinhua took out his husband's suicide note in front of the reporters. Crying bitterly, he said that he was also helpless. Hui Yinchi honored his promise to Yang Jinhua in public. The chaotic situation was instantly reversed. Not only did he protect the reputation of the Hua Corporation, but under the media reports, the stock price of the Hua Corporation soared. Of course, this was a matter of the future. After dealing with the reporter's question, Hui Yinchi felt much more relaxed and prepared to go to the hospital to see Xia Luobing. He was not surprised to see Li Xiang walking towards him, why are you here? President Hua, our leader is worried that things will get out of hand here. Let's help maintain order. Now that the matter is settled, we should retreat first. Li Xiang smiled at Hui Yinchi and said half dot jokingly, our leader is so considerate. Hearing Li Xiang's words, Hui Yinchi's mood instantly improved. The corner of his mouth curved, sorry to trouble you, I'll treat you to dinner another day. His ice is really considerate, actually thinking so thoughtfully. In fact, she still cares about him. Thinking of this, Yinchi Hua only wanted to hurry back to her side, not wanting to waste a minute. Ding dong. Ding dong. The phone in his pocket rang. Hui Yunqi answered happily, Yunqi, what is it? Big brother, big sister dot in dot law has been kidnapped. Hui Yunqi cried out in panic. When she returned the clothes to Yi Xiaochen, she knew that there was something wrong with the 10 miles Golden Beach project. There were many people gathering to cause trouble, so she followed Yi Xiaochen worriedly. She did not expect to encounter the Tao Zui of stopping a car on the roadside. Only then did she know that something had happened to Xia Luo Bing. If anything happens to Bing Bing, I don't want to live anymore. Intoxicated, her red eyes wiped away a handful of tears. Why was she so stupid? Why did she get out of the car? Isn't it enough to go around? Hui Yunxi's face turned pale with fright as well. He was bewildered and kept urging, hurry up. Hurry up. Seeing the woman's nervous appearance, Yi Xiaochen's heart ached. He frowned and said, don't cry anxiously. Luo Bing's skill is so good, she definitely won't suffer a loss. What do you know? Hui Yunxi roared angrily, sister dot in dot law still has a fever. Can she beat two people? Yi Xiaochen said in a deep voice, Yunxi, you are also sick. 
After soaking in cold water for a while and refusing to go to the hospital, Huiyinshi's spirits were also not very good. His cheeks were flushed with a morbid flush, and his eyes were even more sparkling. The carriage quieted down. Yi Xiaochen unconsciously raised his speed. Huiyinshi and Zue Zue also fell silent, praying in their hearts that Xia Luobing must be safe. Twenty minutes later, the three of them met with Yinchi Ho hearing Tao Zui talk about the situation at that time, Ho Yinchi's expression was extremely ugly. He didn't know if it was an ordinary kidnapping case or a case specifically targeted at Xia Luo Bing Hui Yinchi looked at Li Xiang who was left behind and frowned, can you ask the Public Security Bureau to start looking for someone? Li Xiang nodded forcefully, I'll call Director Gao immediately. I must save the leader. Who is this guy who tied up their criminal police captain without eyes? He's really tired of living. Sorry, I didn't take good care of Luo Bing, I shouldn't have let her come here. I should have stopped her. After saying that, Tao Zui was already crying. Why was she so stupid? Why didn't she stop Bing Bing? You can't be blamed for everything. Hui Yinchi looked at the few people and said in a deep voice, Go back and wait for the news. It's useless to be anxious here. Hui Yinchi's expression was gloomy. This time, no matter who tried to touch his people, they would have to pay a heavy price. After sending Hui Yinchi away, Yi Xiaochen turned around and came back. His expression was very bad. He said in a low voice, Could it be Dai Heng did it? Ever since they found out that the man was probably alive, both of them felt as if they had planted an unknown time bomb in their lives. They had no clue when or how the bomb exploded. I don't know. Hui Yinchi's expression was gloomy as he stood in front of the window, Xiao Sha on his face. Regardless of whether it was him or not, I will make those who hurt ice pay a heavy price. Until the next morning, Hui Yinchi still hadn't received any phone calls from the kidnappers, so these people shouldn't be for money, but specifically for Xia Luobing. This news caused Hui Yinchi's expression to become serious. President Hua, the Public Security Bureau has activated a search system that covers the entire city and found traces of the leader in Longshui Port. Li Xiang said on the phone, we suspect that those people brought the leader to the ship. Hanging up the phone, Hui Yinchi drove to the Longshui Harbor with a gloomy face. Because of the unintentional force, the knuckles of his fingers holding the steering wheel turned white, which was extremely frightening. The sound of water rushed into her ears. Xiao Luobing opened her eyes in a daze. Her eyes were dim and there was the smell of fish. A moment later, she understood her situation. She was at the bottom of a cabin, and she saw fishing nets that were randomly piled together in the cabin. She thought that this should be a fishing boat. Dot damn it. Xia Luobing moved carefully and slowly untied the rope behind her. Because of the sleeping pills, she felt her head sink. She pinched her palm with her fingernails to wake her up. Feeling the rope in her hand loosened, Xia Luobing's heart instantly relaxed. She moved her numb wrist, and her eyes adapted to the darkness in the cabin. Only then did she discover that there were actually a few women lying on her left side, all tied up like dumplings, and her mouth was tightly sealed with adhesive tape. Trafficking in human beings. A few words suddenly popped into Xia Luobing's mind, so the seemingly ordinary fishing boat was actually trafficking in human beings. It was just that they didn't know from which port they set off, and where they were going recalling the recent crackdown on trafficking in women and children in Sea City, and the fact that someone had actually acted against the trend and captured the captain of the criminal police unit to kidnap and sell women and children. Xia Luobing felt that she really did not have the face to meet her colleagues in the police station if she could not completely deal with these people. Hey! Xia Luobing carefully pushed a woman who was lying at her feet. She found that the other party did not react at all. She then looked at the others who were also asleep. The people above said that they must keep an eye on that woman. We must bring her to Southeast Asia smoothly. I know, I know. This isn't the first time I've done such a thing. Don't worry. 
And where do you think people can run off to in this sea? Hmm, it's better to be careful. Hearing someone enter, Xia Luobing quickly put her hands behind her back and closed her eyes. She pretended to be unconscious. Not long after, she felt someone pinching her face. Then, she smiled with satisfaction, not bad, I'm sure she can sell for a good price. I really don't know what the higher.ups think. I used all my strength to get this woman to sell to us. I don't want all the money. I really picked up a bargain. All right, don't offend the higher.ups. Just handle this matter properly. The two of them checked the unconscious woman in the cabin one by one to make sure that nothing was wrong. Then, they left at ease. Xiao Luobing suddenly opened her eyes, her gaze sharp like a leopard ready to attack at any time. It seemed that someone was looking for trouble with her, but who exactly was the person that the two of them called, above? Take her to Southeast Asia. Is it related to the drug case the high office is talking about? Xia Luobing's mind spun rapidly. He put all the questions together and thought about whether he should follow this group of people to Southeast Asia to explore the tiger's den. Bang! The ship suddenly came to a halt. The barrels in the cabin suddenly collided with the cabin and made a dull noise. Xiao Luobing pricked up her ears vigilantly and paid attention to the surrounding environment.